So how's everyone doing? Hi, Marianne. Hi, David. Hi, Marie. Hi. Is that Marianne? This is me. So good to see you. Those. Let me go grab my stack of papers. I need to check that list. That's not so long. One day I was just playing around. You know, with that, that Zoom list with Australia, Canada, Ireland, blah, blah, blah. Keep intending to shorten that list. Huh? Well, that Zoom thing. Oh. It bothers me that it's so long. Everybody have a good week. Marianne, were you busy? Very busy. Can everybody see my screen? I have my Zoom shrunk, but I can see your screen, David. Yeah. You, see, you see the uh, calculated value of your paper savings bonds? Yes, I, I can do. see it. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I put up an. Here, I put this image up so everybody can see something nice for a while. <laughs> um, where the hell did that go? Oh, here we go. Here's this Rogine. Yes, I'm here. I, I invited you. Who all? What group is this? What is it? Uh, David's in this group, too. Okay. Hi, Rogine. Hello, how are you? 
good. Napoleon Dynamite. Who's that? Huh? We have a Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, wow. What a name. <laughs> well, Not I, me. I just want to make sure he feeds Tina. I'll never be a Napoleon with my hand in my shirt. <laughs> it was a, a movie a long time ago. And uh, it was this uh, very interesting, unique kid in high school. <laughs> it's uh, Emil. <clears throat> I, uh, my, I have my Zoom result has been defaulted at that for, I don't even know how it ended up there, but I just ended up leaving it. <laughs> are, you, are you voting for Pedro? Yes, I am. <laughs> as long as he's as long as he's legal. <laughs> yeah, that was a big fit. That was a big movie. That was a popular movie when I was in college. We all we. Oh, yeah. I don't think I ever saw it. Yeah. Such a stupid movie, Rogine. Um, but oh. you'll re if you it's like stupid. Thank you. It was one of those stupid English comedy things. No, this is made in America, and nobody wants a roundhouse kick to the f roundhouse kick to the face while I'm wearing these bad boys. Yeah, I usually sh those off within two or three minutes when I figure out what they are. <laughs> it's a high school coming of age movie. Um, it, it was actually quite funny. Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> You might, not find, you might not find it funny. I didn't but. have access to movies that much when I was a coming-of-age person. <laughs> well, Marie, are you set? Should I start? I'm ready. Okay. I was just waiting to make to get the go-ahead. Um, yeah, I just finished uh, in making personal invites. Okay. Well, I'll give it another minute or two. Okay. We'll wait till uh, uh, it's 18 after. Let's... Give it five minutes, 23 after. Okay. And then people can trickle in after they see it. So let me see what I got. Okay. Um, I guess what I should do is pull up. Now, a lot of this, um, Rogine and Marianne, uh, a lot of this, they already know what I'm sharing because we discussed it and Marianne and I are study buddies when we, when it comes to getting stuff done. Um, I will bring up, which is, I think is my greatest achievement. Um, I finally, with Alib's help, a libertarian, a libertatum, um, we did a zoom call and he helped me finalize my GSA bonds. So I'll review the final versions. I have them scanned in. I have them printed out. Um, this is actually going to be quite fun. Except I don't have a screen I can see. Uh, the, everything I share will be put in the group files and you can download them when you need them. Group files? Which, which group? Um, well, Both? since this is Marie's call, it will be it will be in her group. Okay. All right. We'll do. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I try. Everything that I will show on screen, if it's a document, I will make sure that there's a copy of it um, for what we share. And I can't. Why is my stupid A B C D document scans? Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong thing. David, would you be putting a template of the GSA bonds up? If not, that's okay. I'm just um, uh, in the, from the last. Is that Modi? Hey, Modi. Um, from the last video, you already saw my completed bonds. Um, they're in. They're in the file. Uh, or, well, not from my last video. It's from the Zoom call uh, back in May that we first met on. They're already. They're already in there, and you have them. You're Is gonna that see, a Dropbox file? If you download, I believe if you download what Marie posts and you download all three files, you'll get um, the Dropbox link, you'll get the video, and you'll get the chat. Um, but uh, that, that's fine. If you still have a problem 
uh, getting access to the files, uh, send me an email and chat or something, or send me your email address and chat, and I'll make sure that you get uh, copies. Um, okay. Uh, I'm not watching chat, so if you guys if you guys say something, were you sending letters to debt? Were you sending letters to debt collectors? Modi, I do send. Uh, I I do run a credit repair business, so I I do that um, normally. Anyway. Okay. Well, then, yeah, I'll probably be emailing you a lot soon. Well, uh, I I teach you how to do a debt validation, and, and Marianne has, has seen it in full view, and um, those people cannot answer the information. So, um, anyway, here's what we got going on. Um, Modi's familiar. Marianne, you've seen the video. Rojean, this is new to you. And Maria, obviously it's your call. So you've seen the video where Alib taught us how to execute and fill out the bonds. So these are my scans. And we're starting with the, um, we're starting with the 24, right here. This is the 24, the, the 24. Now, the date the bond executed that was your arrest. That was for me the arrest date. The principal is your upper and lowercase name, and notice the the colon here. So that stands for David James House of Verderon. This is an individual. This is where the surety is, and that is the courthouse address. We don't know what the penal sum is because it was never disclosed. So the, the I reference my case number right here. You have to sign Dave, the person, House of Verderam. You also have to have the individual sureties. You're going to see this a lot in the rest of the bonds. Um, now, I went out and bought notary seals, and before I finished these bonds, I was told to get an embosser. So what it says here is Verderam, comma, David James, doing business as David James Verderam. I'm in the state of Pennsylvania, so I picked Pennsylvania, my corporate seal, seal, and then 1978 is my birthday right here. Okay, so we'll go on to the 25. This is the performance bond. Again, everything is similar. Arrest date over here. We have courthouse here. We have, we have, I'm sorry, home house, courthouse, uh, contract date, arrest date, contract number, court number, court case, signature the same way. Now, David, I don't have a a raised seal. I've got those little gold seals, but I don't have any any embosser. You, can I use a postage stamp and sign through it? You can do that, but but what um, what I was told was the red thumbprint is enough as your seal. Cool. I just happened to have bought the embosser and I wanted to use it, and I had the seals left over. I'm using it. Um, what we're going to do, because I'm going to show you my letters, um, if they're invalid for any reason, they send them back with an affidavit. So if I filled these bonds out wrong, I'm giving instructions on saying, you better tell me where they're wrong. Um, but this raised seal is actually very important uh, in other processes or other documents. So this is the 25. Where did you get the seal? I had it made for $30 from quill.com. Quill? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Now you can go get your own. Um, basically, it's a notary seal. Uh, this is this is it. Has the little thingy. Oh, sure. <laughs> it looks like a rabbit. Um, I believe it's called a rabbit seal or rabbit punch or something. So that's what I use. And you can have it made however you want. I got it within a week. Hey, G Pen. Hello. So, so now we go down. We did the 25, we did the 25A. So, home address. All caps name, court address, arrest date, bond number, um, signatures, seal. That's 25A. Affidavit of individual, individual survey. This is different. Take notice. Pennsylvania, County of Bucks. That's where my straw man lives. I was born in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. And my court case is in Snyder County, Pennsylvania. And hey, quick, excuse me, quick question. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so I'm Pennsylvania as well, but Pennsylvania, their birth certificates, wouldn't that be Harrisburg? Because they don't do county. You can't get a birth certificate from the county. No, I'm, for the affidavit of individual certainty, I'm telling them where to look. So I was when I was born. I was born in Bucks County. And you, okay, you're talking about the hospital. I, I was actually home birthed. I was raised by hippies, but yeah, it would be okay. it okay. would be where your birth certificate was originally registered. That's where your straw man was. But right for me, it, even though all right, the hospital I was born at is no longer exists. Okay. But from my understanding, all birth certificates would be in, in Harrisburg, Department of Vital Statistics. Vital Statistics, yeah. Um, well, uh, just look for the county where your hospital was. I mean, it's Dauphin, if you're in Harrisburg, there's Dauphin County. You know, I mean, it's got to be one of the counties. Right, but that's what I'm saying. For for all Pennsylvania birth certificates after a certain year. They go straight to Harrisburg. You can't get it in the county. I, 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 it's not where you get it. It's where it was originally recorded. I was, right. my birth certificate was originally recorded in Buffalo. Here, I'll show you. Seriously? Yeah. I'm not, I mean, yeah, I, I would like to see it, but for me, my understanding is is that I try to get something from, I was born in Philadelphia, uh -huh. and I can't get anything from Philadelphia. I got to go straight to Harrisburg, and that's why I was saying, and the only reason why is because it's Pennsylvania, you know what I mean? If it was any other state, I would have just left it alone. I know, Pennsylvania is a fucking nut job thing to try to do. Um, what did my first get to? Oh, yeah, I have one here, huh? Got it. All right, uh, G Pen, this is for you, and I'm sorry if I took too long. Um, for the rest of the class. But. No, you're fine. I'm sorry. I mean, I, it just so happens because it's Pennsylvania, you know, because I'm, I'm having problems with them now. Our Pennsylvania people need to stick together because everything's so fucking ass backwards, and I apologize for cursing, but everything that we are supposed to be learning together is totally opposite and totally backwards for Pennsylvania. So, here's my authenticated birth certificate from back from the state now here's one of my birth here's the birth certificate i got and you can see it's registered in bucks county i'll scan it for you if you can't see it but it says county of birth bucks okay 
Yeah, actually, I can, uh, I can, um, I can pull mine up to look at it as well. I mean, and granted, it may say it may say that, but I'm saying the only place that you can get it would be Harrisburg. Mm-hmm. Oh, that may be true, Gene. That may this be is, true. This is for the this is for the bonds, and this tells them where to look for the bond. This is totally different on where to get it. Because here's one from Vital Statistics I just got recently, and it still says place of birth, Bucks County. Right. So when I'm filling out my affidavit of individual surety, I'm telling the GSA to go look for my birth certificate in Bucks County. In Bucks County, yeah. Right. Makes and, sense. Yeah, and that and that and that that there does make sense. Now I have a question. Down in down in that lower left corner, is that a notary stamp? Because that looks um, on your birth certificate. Because that looks different than my birth certificate. Yes, I had a notarized copy. Uh, when you make copies of your birth certificate, I scan the copy in and I put the notary the notarization onto it in Photoshop. Right. And, um. I had I brought the original down because I don't want the court to have my original, but she's notarizing that it is a true original copy, and that's just as good. Right, but you would also have to have that uh, attest. Well, that's what it's called is attested, and you would also have to mark on their copy because if you look down on that bottom, it tells you 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 technically you cannot copy it. I don't know where is where it is exactly, but if you on that bottom somewhere, it it says you cannot copy that. I'll I'll, I'll pull up a copy of it, and you can see what I, what I have. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, to this take over, but you know, because you're 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 I've been dealing with Pennsylvania, and they're a pain in the ass. No, 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 no. It's not a big it's not a big deal because you know we're we're all here for a reason. Um, DJV, BC. Okay, I'll pull this up. Can you see the screen, G Pen? Yes, I can. Okay, that's 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 my birth certificate scan. This is the postulation that I put on in Photoshop, and it says it's a copy. Okay, yeah, right there. I got you. Because I did, I did look. Like Right, and if you look on here, on that bottom down there, I believe it is. Yeah. On the blue, right around there somewhere, I think it says that you can't make a copy. Huh? Um, and I, it works. That's what I was supposed to do. Uh, this is this is USFL and Jonah Bay's process uh, for doing the GSA bond and copying the first certificate. Okay. So. Well, yeah, I'm not going to argue. I'm just saying I know for, for a fact for Pennsylvania, I mean, and for me, when I do mine, I put down their copy. You know, this is a true and correct copy mm-hmm. so that there's no, uh, which we call it, but also um, you're the holder or, or something to that effect that you're the holder in due course uh, or the custodian of the record, if that makes sense. It does. Um, but that's... I already had this done, so I'm just dealing with it because I've been I've been trying to understand these GSA bonds for damn near a year because I couldn't get a great answer. Um, except for the last call where A Lib Libertatum he he walked us through this and I'm showing the end result right now. Can somebody mute out whoever's got the static? If, if second I just found the copy of mine. I'm going to show uh, show y'all how I did mine, if if that's okay. Yeah, if you want, uh, if you want to email it to me, I'll screen share. If you want to screen share for a second, I'll I'll. Yeah, I'll, let me uh, real quick. Yo, yeah, real quick, and I'll 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 give it back. Okay. We're sending live collectors. Uh, stop share. All right. All right. Uh, where share? All right, so this is this is this is an old one. 
this is an old one. So this is how mine was done. Um, I just made a copy of it, and then I put the uh, copy certified by document mm -hmm. custodian, okay, the uh, Gerat, so forth and so on, and um, uh, true correct copy and so forth and so on. But the other ones that I do with the newer ones, I put it up in red up top here, uh, true and correct copy holder in due course. So, see, you uh, have you have a small birth certificate like I did my original one, and you know, uh, besides the state of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia has their own uh, rules of procedure, and Pittsburgh has their own rules of procedure. Right. So. And and, and and I just looked at it, and it says County of Birth, Philadelphia. So I so got that's, it. That's where you'd put it in, in your affidavit of uh, individual surety. So, you know, you'd, you'd have Philadelphia here where I have Bucks. And Bucks County is just north of Philadelphia. Yes. Um, so that's the affidavit of individual surety. And I had it notarized the other day. I did not get all goofy and crazy and bring my uh, red thumbprint down there. I had it notarized and I put the thumbprint on it later. Um, I don't think anybody can tell. This is the form uh, 90, optional form 90. And this was a big point out to me. Now this is my personal information, you guys. I don't, if you wanna take, <laughs> you want to steal my credit? Go ahead, because it sucks. But um, I was told your place of residence from ALIB was your Pennsylvania birth certificate, and that's my birth certificate number, your contract number, your because you're a government contractor through your Social Security number. That's your government Social Security number. Um, I added this, and I just spelled everything out, uh, signed and sealed. I'm done. And then same for the 91. And it's pretty much straightforward. Um, this is called the trilogy or the trifecta. Um, you do your 24, your 25, your 25A, and this gets you out of the court case. So now, um, I added what you're supposed to do. And Modi, you might recall if you're still on. I can't tell if you are. Um, yeah, I'm still here. We're supposed to get a copy of our our docket sheet. And uh, we put that on the top. We take our GSA bonds, the 24, 25, 25A, 90, 91. And um, we mail it off to the highest person in our, in our county, which in Pennsylvania, I have a county commissioner. We send a copy to the judge registered mail. We send uh, it certified to everybody else, um, the clerk, the prosecutor, and the Lieutenant General of the Army Corps of Engineers. So uh, another thing Aleb taught us was how to look up our paper savings bonds. Okay, this is the OTN number. Oh, let me pull up chat in case somebody's uh, moderate is pronounced like Modi soft uh, sound for what? Um, all right. I don't, okay. Um, anyway, so I have an OTN number right here on my docket sheet. Mm -hmm. I have the original complaint number right here on my docket sheet, that's at the magisterial level. This is my court case level uh, that I'm dealing with right now. And then this is the same exact number um, as the incident and complaint number issued by the police, the State Police of Pennsylvania. I found them all and I'm adding this to my packet because what I've done is I've I've took a Patrick Devine letter. Um, I want my bonds back. And I've drafted it, and this has been shared. This isn't any secret anywhere. Um, I've just reformatted it and drafted it. And I basically added 
uh, this verbiage, but I'm going to change because I found three other bonds for it. So I'm going to list them. And then uh, I just added this bullet list here. It, I didn't add it because it was a paragraph uh, in Patrick Devine's letter. And then I just went in and basically made sure there was no typos and went through and formatted it. This is probably the hardest paragraph to try to make sense out of, but I just left it as it is. And uh, I, I went rolling with it. So now, um, basically you put your name in here, your county and you know, make it suit your case. But I, I, besides adding an extra paragraph and reformatting the page, this is Patrick Devine's letter. Um, no secret here, but I'm adding this to the registered letter to my judge and I'm CCing and you guys will see some addresses here. Um, County Board of Commissioners, and that's his address. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Attorney General, Chief Justice Thomas G. Saylor, the head of the Pennsylvania Insurance Department, because I plan on claiming their bonds. This is the Lieutenant General's address I was able to find. For Pennsylvania, this is the Bureau of Risk Management for the entire state. And for my county, this is my county risk management. They're all getting a copy. So how did you find your uh, QCIP numbers or your EE numbers? Uh, the EE numbers, I went to Treasury Direct. And if you, um, just like Alib taught us on the last call, I can pull it up now if you guys want me to. Um, you, go, you? you go to Treasury direct.gov I have the hardest time getting in there and finding them it's so easy um, but it, I'm only saying that because somebody showed it to me now I, I didn't get QCIP numbers Every research I try to do for QCIP numbers, uh, it never works. Uh, actually, my internet's slow. Let me go back the page because what I want you to see, I want you to see this right here savings bond calculator. So you go to treasurydirect.gov, you scroll down, look for the savings bond calculator. You type in, you change the denomination to 10,000. This is where I typed in my court case number and you can see they're in my history. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was my arrest date that was the month of my arrest you hit calculate that bond that middle number that you filled in is your court case number bond serial number is court case number and I'll sh if you have your court case number I'll type it in you can see it live did you do uh, arrest warrants? I, I'm sure you could. I don't. I don't have access to the arrest warrants. Um, but then to get this printout right here, all I did was. G Pen, you didn't change your battery. All I did was hit print. And then I chose the print option from my browser and it gave me gave me this report. I just saved it. I saved it as a PDF and those are all my 
Those are on my bike. Okay, for me, I don't have a court case. All I got is arrest warrants from five years ago. That's a bill. It's still a check. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. I'm uh, I'm gonna try that while we're while while you're going. I, I'm gonna try that. If you have the warrant number, I'll do it on the screen. Yeah, I gotta look them up real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Let me know. So, Can I? Oh yes, go ahead. Hi there. Um, do I have to be a secured party creditor to do this? Or I'm not. I'm. Oh. I'm not yet. Really. Oh wow! No, this is all this is all free research. Um, We're working because, on it. Because you have okay. you have your birth certificate, you have your social yes. security number. Yes. You know, I've besides me getting a TDA account and a bunch of other EINs for my uh, foreign grantor trust, I'm not utilizing those yet because I'm still caught up in this court case. So right, go to treasurydirect.com, look uh -huh. up your. Uh, let me make sure. Okay. I know how to get there. Yeah. Yeah, and you can even. I've calculated. I've even gotten the, gotten the green the green um, seal from the bank. The bank. The medallion. Uh, the medallion. Yes. And uh, when I called them, I don't think you're supposed to call them, but the um, the the bank director was actually. Oh, I'm so happy that you're you're doing this. And and she said. Uh, it was 40, 40 grand on my birth certificate bond. And no. She actually... no, it's a lot more. This, this oh, really? is $5,000, but this is actually, because it's $10,000 denominations, uh -huh. this is $5 million. Wow. That's how I came up to $20 million. So now, what is the, the green medallion proof? What do you the know? The medallion about stamp, it? and I have one because I you need the medallion stamp to take the hard lock off of your Treasury Direct account. Awesome. I did it. Okay. Yes. I did it too, and we talked about it the other night in another group. And okay. you're supposed to get confirmation, but I didn't. Um, okay. I don't know. I, I really don't know what to do with the Treasury Direct account, and I really didn't know what to do with the hard lock, but I did it. Yeah. Um, okay. Here, here is my, my TDA. I don't have it scanned in, but there's my medallion stamp. Yeah, that's what it looks like. All they needed, all she needed was a... Uh, Proof that I did own the the well that I had the social security the, the social security matched and also an ID a form of my uh, of ID and then I showed her that my treasury uh, direct account and she said perfect I'm gonna sign it. Yeah. So moving on because I'm okay. sending these. Oh, oh, if anybody has a question, I'm just keeping the discussion going. So. Uh, Patrick Devine's I want my bonds back is going to the judge. Now, this is a letter to the prosecutor. And always make sure you add this when you're dealing with money. Notice to agent, notice to principal, notice to principals, notice to agent. This was a letter shared to me um, by somebody very active and very high up in the group. And you may have seen this. Uh, in a bunch of other groups, and this might be familiar to you. I didn't write this. I took this because they shared it with me. Um, and basically, I'm telling the prosecutor to have his accountant prepare the 1099 OID, and he's getting a copy of my GSA bonds. And this has my Treasury Direct number in here. I don't know why, but they had it. So I used it, and that's the whole that's the whole letter here. And the same person that shared this letter to me recently made a post about getting the bonds from the clerk. And I just basically copied the post, edited it, and put it in here. And this is the letter that's going to accompany my uh, bonds copy to the clerk of courts. 
I have to, I have this verbiage in all three letters and I have to rewrite it because I have to add the three other bonds I found. But here's, here's the bottom of the letter so you can see everything. And that's the package so far. Um, what brings me to what I want to add to it is part of the call tonight is this form, the color of law violations, denial of rights under color of law. Holy moly. This I thought was a fake form because there was no instructions anywhere. And are you trying to say something, G-Pen? The warrants showed up. Did they? They did. How much you worth, man? Um, hold on. Uh, I lost the page. Change? I, yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying I actually lost the page. I don't oh. know where the hell it went at. Because I got you, I got two monitors. I clicked on something, <laughs> and I'm trying to watch you. And uh, 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 oh shucks! Oh man, where did it go? Uh, oh here it is, here it is, here it is. So I, I just, I put one in. I said, okay, maybe this is BS. <clears throat> so I put one in, and it's five thousand one hundred twelve dollars. Did you change your denominations to ten thousand? I did. That's well. You add you add five zeros to that. That's five million dollars. <laughs> the other one <coughs> came up the same, but I put by mistake because it was saying, <coughs> "Excuse me, issue date." It uh, it, it came up an error, so um, I had to change the issue date. I forgot to put the ten thousand in. But it ended up with 50, and uh, it came up with uh, 2556. <clears throat> but yeah, I put the, uh, the serial numbers in uh, for the warrants. Yeah. Uh, just two of them. I haven't even done the rest of them yet, but I put two of them in there. Yeah, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, you put your case, you can even put your birth certificate number in here. And I'm sorry, but is it? Is it there's too much of a coincidence, or there's really something to this. What do you What do you want? To I have the complete number, the OTN number, two court case numbers all pulled up on this phone. I, I I don't want to be beating a dead horse, but I mean this this is all related to my case. These are the same exact numbers on my docket sheet. All the numbers I could look up on my docket sheet are right here. So, um, let me give you guys a second. Uh, this is the color of law violation warning. I want to go get a glass of water, but let me put this up on the screen and you guys can read it or, or ask questions or just give me two seconds. Please. I want to I wanna, I wanna get a drink. I'm muted by the note, so what do you want, sweetie? Hey, you guys. Wait till I tell you about this. This is awesome. Oh, shucks. Okay. I just put my freaking birth certificate number in there. And. Uh oh. 
Yeah. It's worth it. Hold it. Hold up. 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 Your mind's getting blown in if you can. No. Wait. 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 Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. It says um, original issue was seventy five hundred seventy two thousand one hundred twenty eight dollars for a value of seventy nine thousand six hundred twenty eight dollars. You might have to change it from E D to E bonds. It's on e. It wouldn't let me do E E. It's on E. Oh, okay. All right. e EEs, I'm, 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 I was issued before 1980. You guys have a projector and a big, large screen as big as the sky. 17TR18122. Yeah, this is just so everybody can see it. Um, this is my, this is one of my birth certificate bond numbers. And we'll hit calculate. I'm on the E bond. Wow, and that's from that's that's the number off this birth certificate right here that I shared with everybody. See it right down. Here? So is that why you have to do the authentication process first? Um, you for the GSA bonds, you don't need to be authenticated. At least that's what I'm I'm understanding. Okay. But uh, you, still, you still want to do that because you are a holder in due course. Uh-huh. And I'm sorry, you got cut off a little bit. What now? Come again? You have to what? You'd still want to uh, authenticate your birth certificate at state and federal level because then you are backed by full face and credit of the United States and you are the true holder in due course. Aye. Okay. 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 So what what is this worth? What is forty seven thousand in millions? Oh, you add five zeros to it. Yeah. Whoa. Five zeros. Whoa. Somebody has a mute. Mute yourself. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. So um, that's. I'm, I'm just teaching you guys where I got the stuff from, and it's nothing that wasn't taught from another call we already have recorded. It's just this this is today's date of everything. I'm new to the group. I'm new to the group. So oh, where fine. can I find this? Is this? Okay. Uh, Marie has them posted on the wall for the, the recording calls, um, and if you want, uh, I can, I have a copy of it. Uh, I think it's in Google Drive somewhere or Dropbox somewhere. Um, Murray's on the call. She'll find a way to get a copy of the previous video for the GSA bonds that we did. Okay. Because we also covered a lot more than just the GSA bonds. We got a lot of stuff out of Alip, and he he was he was on fire that night. I just it was all my information, which is why I'm following up so you guys can see. Mm -hmm where we were to where we are. Look in library discussion. Okay, just scroll down to previous meetings and then you'll see, try to keep everything consolidated. So you'll see the multiple links that you would need. Thank you, Mary. Now, um, a quick question. I, my mom gave me the original, original um, birth certificate where it has uh, printed on there the upper lower case not all caps at all printed on there but it's smaller um, and there's just a red number on the back of it and I'm from Texas can I also look that number up but it does say this is the, the this is it doesn't say a copy it says this is well do you want to get a live birth you, I was you, astonished. You can do it. Just, you can do it yourself, or I can do it now on the call for you if you feel comfortable enough uh, putting the number out there. I mean, I don't. You know, I, don't I, I don't want to know sure. it. Right, I'm out of. I'm out of uh, uh, town, but it's like 
it's right there on my desk there, but this is amazing. I'll put it in um, myself, but I, it would be totally interesting on, on what it shows. Uh -huh. I wouldn't mind giving it to you. If but you it, but the red I'll number is on the back. Number. What does that mean? That's your QCIP number. That's a different number. I don't know how to oh. do QCIPs. This is not QCIP. This is bond. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump in here for a second. And I'm, I'm not a fireman. Um, I'm not trying to throw any water on, on anybody's fire. I'm a fireman. Huh? I'm a fireman. You're a fireman? Yeah, volunteer. Oh, okay. For real, for real. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just not trying to put out anybody's excitement. So um, I was on a call, and basically um, somebody had uh, made a suggestion, and basically what they were attempting to do was uh, they were saying that, you know, they were going to teach us how to get uh, cars, uh, how to buy a car and, and, and stuff, um, and get the black card and this, that, and the other. And so basically, um, they took us to a website, and they said, you know, you put your name in and search, and boom, and then all these results popped up, and, and, and they said to us, tell us how much you're worth. And so basically, one, because I was familiar with the site that he directed us to, two, because I'm a computer guy, so I'm kind of familiar with how computers work, programming, and so forth and so on, that when I looked at what he was saying, I had to call bullshit. Because basically, everything that came up was not mine. It's just like when you go into Google and you put in there apples uh -huh. and you'll, all kind of stuff will start coming up. It doesn't mean that it's apples that you're looking for. It could be just something that looked like they had the word apple in the uh, program. Uh -huh. David, if you put David in this particular search engine, it's going to bring up every, every document that has David in it. But if it's not you, that's not yours. If it's David Smith, that's not you. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. the, the point, the point, what I'm saying is, is this. I've been playing around with this. And, you know, granted, the, the warrants came up. The birth certificate came up. I put my social security number in there. It came up. Put my other social security number in there. It came up. And so just for shits and giggles, I said, hmm, well, let me just try one. And I put one in there, and basically something came up. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that's mine, um, only behind the fact that it, it, I, I, I don't know if there's a, a document that has a serial number with one, if that makes sense. And I, I agree with you. There's, there's, there's no proof I have beyond pulling this number up that's off my birth certificate or pulling this number up that's off my court case, that I'm really entitled to any of that money. But I'm willing to risk yeah, it. Right. I'm willing yeah, to cancel right. it. And, I mean, it's too much of a coincidence. Plus, maybe they did make it in my name. That is mine. It's identity theft. And if it's wrong, then they're going to tell me about it. If not, I just risked a, a, a registered mailing and I may or may not get $20 million. So. Right. Yeah, and, and, and I, I got what you're saying. And it's, it's it, I mean, it's, it's, it's a chance that we all have to take. Yeah. So in the you know, intro, I, got, I got nothing to lose. And you know what? I could end up in federal prison over this. Just, that's, that, that's the other thing. That's, so. that's what I'm scared about, which is why I was so hesitant on the GSA bonds. But we have confirmation this person was trained from Jonah Bay, trained from USFL. They took the time to teach me how to fill them out right. And not only did we have that class recorded, but I filled them out, I finished them, and I'm, and I'm putting together my letters because I want that money. That's my money. Right. And, and I, I get what you're saying because, I, you know, I'm familiar with GSA bonds, and I actually use that in a process 
to to do something as well, which actually worked out in my favor. And the, the you know the point that I'm saying, the reason why I was questioning about the arrest warrant was because the arrest warrant ended up on somebody doing a process, and uh, I didn't fully understand the process, and I jumped out there and did it. And um, I caught six felonies because I didn't fully understand what was going on. So for me, the hesitation is, is very real, you know, uh-huh. um, and me doing my due diligence just to make sure that we're clear on what's happening. And, you know, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm just being ca- cautiously optimistic in this whole process, and I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just saying what I'm seeing from a computer guy standpoint. I actually did something else and I didn't put any bond number in there and it still came up. So well, hey, I'm I'm just as much hesitant as the next guy, except I I'm tired of the court case. If this quashes everything and my research teaches me that this is gonna quash everything, um because I'm going to finish doing my presentation for everyone, all the other fun stuff I got planned. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm tired of of not acting, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna let them react. I'll be proactive, let them be reactive, and you know what? I'm already going to jail anyway. I might as well go to Club Fed if I'm going to file these GSA bonds wrong. I mean, I don't I don't. Come on now. But, you know, if we end up in jail, you know, I'll have Martha Stewart's old bedroom, maybe. And that's, that's, I think that's what the security, I'm in foreclosure still, and I'm not going to mention any names or anything, but since October of last year. And I called, I called to see if there was any lien on my name, because it's the the name that they do business with, okay? Connect to your social security. And I called the state of Texas, SOS, and I went to the UCC department, okay? Uh, I'm not trying to interrupt the class at all, but this is very interesting. And what the UCC told me was, and the secured party, come on now, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Bridget, you I were, it at that. you're, you're very uh, broken up, but what I, oh. what I think you want to try, could we, I couldn't hear you fully, but I think I understand what you're saying. What uh-huh. you might want to try is doing a UCC 11 in the state you were born in. A UCC 11 is a lean search. Okay. When it comes back blank with there's no liens, then mm-hmm. that proves there's no liens. Now, what you do after that, I don't know. I didn't learn that, but I did learn mm-hmm. do the UCC 11 to see what comes up in the state you were born in. Right. In Pennsylvania, it's $85. I'm not doing that. I'm going to do it through. Uh, I'm going to do it through uh, New York City for 10 bucks and see what comes back. I can afford $10. I can't afford 84. Right, it's very expensive. It very Would New York now, what I was can y'all hear me better? Yes, you're not broken up. And G Pen was trying to say something too, so Yeah. What would, would uh, New York give you the same results for Pennsylvania? I don't know. I'm gonna try it. I mean if it's U C C it's U C C. Why you know, why would I want to pay eighty four dollars when I can pay ten? Yeah, because I'm wondering why not just do it in the state I reside in. But, I mean, that's the question, unless you get something that's... Um, well, you're down uh, in Atlanta now, right? I'm in Georgia, yes. Yeah, I lived in Roswell for a little bit. Bridget, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, see if you uh, wanted, wanted to finish saying what you're saying. Everybody okay? Everybody cool? Any questions? Um, this isn't about me. This is for all of us. So 
you know, is it, and, is it the regional searches that cost more? Um, I've never heard of a state uh, UCC 11 costing so much, like what you said, 80 something. You were broken up too, Marie. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Is it the regional searches that cost more? I don't see, I don't understand why it should be regional if it's uniform commercial code. Um, especially when you're filing your UCCs. I, I just, I've, ha I've had people come back to me after I gave that advice, say, what do I do now? And I, the only thing I know to do is make copies of a non-lean and send it all to the three credit bureaus and they remove everything. Yeah, and you can uh, do the lean or the, uh, the search on your birth state, your um, residential state state if you have that and um and then the state where they are um doing business the source of their business let's say it's texas okay so that you can prove you know go a step further and then you can send those to the actual business that supposed secured creditor that's trying to lean you were you giving us instructions because you were still broken up every other word? <laughs> really? Yeah, it was bad. All right, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to write it in chat, I'll read it. If that helps. Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, is there static? Is that a problem? You're fine. Problem? David, that last document, where did you get that from? The COL, because I'm about to go back right. to it. Okay. All right. This I always thought was a fake document because it didn't have instructions. I couldn't find instructions. Um, and it didn't tell you where to mail it to. Here's what you do. You do issue it under the name of the citizen. You do mail it to the recipient, so judge, prosecutor, cop, whoever. You make your statement here. And the reason why I held off executing this is because I think this statement should match all your IRS forms of your complaint. Your 211, your, uh, let me pull them up. I think it should match your 211. I think it should match your 1309. And I think it should match your 3949A. So I've been playing with this COL statement. And then another thing is, let me pull it up. Uh, give me a second because I found where you send them to. And I actually found this from a YouTube video. It's not my work, I'm just sharing. Um, let me pull it up. And if somebody has a question while I do this, it will just take me a minute or a second or two um, to get it. Is this process a part of the GSA bond process? No, it's, it's not part of the process, but it's, it's your, your, your rights are being denied under color of law when there's a statute. If they pull you over, in my case, for a license plate light out, registration light out being, being out, and the cop saw jurisdiction, which he didn't have to begin with, um, he, statutes are not laws. State statutes are not laws. They are operating under the color of law. And if you do your due diligence and your research, you'll find out that your local courthouse isn't a government entity. They are a private for-profit corporation. So this is where you, this is where the violation warning, denial of rights under combo of law comes in because they are a for-private non-government entity trying to deny you rights. Does that make sense at this moment? Yeah, oh, that, that does. So um, like I was asking in the group not too long ago, the uh, police were trying to tow my car. 
So they towed one of my cars on the desk, so I had to get another one. Uh And now they're trying to sue me. The tow company is trying to sue me for the fact that the police made them tow my car. So now I have a debt collection agency trying to contact me for a court case to sue me for my car. So this sounds just right up my alley. Um, That and also, too, if they're trying to collect for a debt, you need to validate the debt. Um, So now here's because of the violation and you you should uh, what the advice Alib gave you from the last call you were on with me and him, you have you executed any of it? Yeah, I listened to the video, but I wasn't too sure of what I was supposed to do with the, um, the information because there was a lot that the ladies were talking about. So I'm going to have to go over that again. I'll email you once you email me more about it. Okay. Um, I have your email in here yet in the chat? Yeah, I sent it to you. Okay. I'll, I'll pull it through. Oh, I got it. Okay. Um, so now, and it, was it Chris that asked about the COL form, Chris? Yes. Okay, Chris. So this was a form I found, and I've been I've had it in my collection for months, and I didn't know how to execute it. And then um, here is the website where you send it to. You contact and email your complaint form, a copy of it. You send them a copy. So you send it direct to whoever you want to send it to. And then what made sense to me was send a copy to the contact address on this website. So then you, you are reporting to them the complaint. And the address is usually, because I have the um, screen share column, uh, general information, office of the assistant attorney general. You send it to Eric S. De- Drybend, attorney general, and then there's an address in here somewhere. And now using this form, sending it out to to the people that should deserve it and then send, sending a copy to that address should get an investigation or some type of warning. But now what I'm working on is, and I've been reaching out to people in the group, I've been working on these tax forms to report the case. So your statement should match from the 13909, the 3949A, and the Form 211. That's what I wanted to bring to the group tonight. What do you guys think of that? Because I think it makes sense. Um, If anybody has some insight more than I do, please feel free to share. I think it sounds about right. I mean, it looks like they all go together. I'm not 100% sure what these are. I'd have to look at them myself and read them over. But it does sound about right because everything's supposed to correspond with each other. Well, um, the, the Form 211 is the whistleblower form, and you report the private for-profit entity, which is your court, to the IRS for money because they're giving you charges. Well, we saw what my charges cost. They're $2 million, uh, $20 million sitting right there. Are we, not, are we not on the same page? Because I'm sorry, they're taking those funds from me. So we report them on the IRS Form 211. Now. Don't you need a 1099-A with that? I already have a 1099-A. I, uh, I didn't go into it, but I have them already filed for just about everything in the, in the county I can find. 
um, and I don't know if you need it. Uh, that's that's kind of why I'm I'm bringing this to the class to say let's put our heads together and and how do you execute the IRS forms and how do you utilize the color of law form now that I actually have an address to send it to and it to me it makes sense to utilize. Um, now we also have our 3949A information referral. Um, so we want to report the income and we did a 1099A to report the income. Now they're not doing their 1099 OIDs and Cs and Rs or whatever they're supposed to be doing. Um, so we have to tell the IRS to do an investigation which initiates the form 211 because they made money and didn't report it to the IRS. And you will get a reward for reporting them, re reporting the court uh, with the IRS Form 211. There's also the same thing, the information referral, and I'm not exactly sure how to execute this one because um, I'm, getting, uh, I'm getting confused trying to keep everything together. And then also the 13, 909 now tax exempt organization complaint referral i already did a 4506a on just about every business entity i could find relating to my county and my court and the prosecutor and the judge and the clerk the sheriff the cops every possible police department so i already got back a response that says they are not a tax exempt organization. So I don't know how much weight this carries because I'm complaining for the tax exempt organization. Um, I'm at a loss. I'm still gonna fill this out and send it because why not? I put a letter of verification with that. Oh so well, yeah, you should, you're supposed to send copies and, and it says, it tells you here, um, in the 3949A, or maybe it's not the 211. I'm missing. Okay, first submission here on the 211, find 4506A, 13909, and then you're also supposed to use the person's name that sent you the response from the IRS. And I believe it's over here. Uh, agent. I had a bunch of these open, so I'm, I'm losing track of where I... I got this, if you guys are in the Knight Sovereign, I know Chris, you are. Um, these are from, these are uh, from the most recent uh, tax forms for cases. Good. But I think if we can put our heads together to figure out if this is all the tax forms that we need to send in for a case, and then we send our color of law letter to the Department of Justice or violation warning to the Department of Justice, um, we have something to use, at least not we, but me, in my head, it makes sense to use this and finally have a place to send it to, which is here, the Department of Justice. And it says how to file a complaint. We already have the form filled out, and this should be the page with the address. Right here. So that's, that's my week of work. Um, really, it was my week of work. Who has any, any questions, comments, stuff you want to talk about? Uh, it's not all about me. It's everybody else, too. Marie put up a, on the chat uh, what she was trying to say. Yes. Search birth and residential state as well as the other corporation state, then send the search result of no lien to that corporation. So I guess you do a UCC 11 for your birth state, 
you do a UCC 11 for your residential state, and then you do a UCC 11 for the debt collector in the state that they are in. And when no liens come back, you send them the fact that they, they don't um, have a valid claim. To me, that sounds like a supreme, a superior debt validation um, filing with UCC as opposed to um, the standard debt validation for consumer contract law and consumer uh, uh, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act and consumer law and stuff like that. So um, that is, that's probably the way to go. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't executed it yet. Um, Modi, I actually, since we're talking. I got a question. Oh, go ahead. Don, you had a question? Yeah. Let's talk about how you get these DUNS numbers and these uh, EINs from the municipal corporation. All right. Well, d perfect. Here, I'll show you. How, I'll show you how to get a DUNS number. I have not been able to get an EIN because it's just too much time, and I uh, I, I need to focus on other things. But here you go. You go to dunnandbradstreet.com. Getting an EIN is really easy. I've gotten my EIN and my estate EIN already. Well, I got no, my estate because they're, of twenty five. They're, they're not talking about your EIN. They're talking about the court EIN. Yeah, I, I got into it. I was getting into it with the, uh, with, the with the state of Florida codes about the uh, the homes being tax exempt. And once I started, I, I wrote these codes down. I, I called the, uh, the 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 tax assessor's office, and uh, I left the criminal code, and I left the code that uh, that showed that the, uh, the the homes were tax exempt because they're charging everybody taxes on their homes. And uh, I got a reply. I got a call back like ten minutes later from the kingpin himself, the clerk of courts, and the comp controller of currency gave me a call. And uh, I started going over all this with him, and he had his dog barking in the background talking about, you know how we do things around here, boy. You know, so, you know, I asked him, I even asked the guy, I'm like, aren't you a, a municipal corporation? Uh, 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 we're, we're a municipal government. I'm like, don't you have a Dunn's number? And he, he, he started, he got real tripped up and everything like that. And the intimidation stopped immediately. He didn't know what I was talking about. But I didn't have that number at the time. What was I prepared for it? the kingpin's, you know, response to me? So, you know, that's what I was asking. Why? How do we get these uh, Duns numbers? All right, uh, I, I pulled everything up for you, and I have an example. If you can see your screen, you gotta you gotta have an account with those people. No, no, it's free information. I I work in the credit repair space and business credit building space, so this is part of what I do for a daily basis, career kind of thing. Um, so this is, this is my bread and butter right now. So here's what you do. Can you see your screen? Yeah, I can, right. I'm looking at it. Go to dunnandbradstreet.com, okay? You're gonna end up on their homepage. You click on Dunn's number. Dunn's number lookup, do you see that? Right. Okay, it brings you to this page right, right here. Now here's how I found it for my court. Well, when you look on Google Maps in the area well, where I'm at, uh, you know, you look at Google Maps and it just says the county, the county name and judges on that building. Well, uh, here, here, and I'll, sh I'll show this example to you. This is, this is the county I'm dealing with in Pennsylvania. This is the clerk of courts. This is her phone number. We're going to copy it. Oh, the phone number. You can look for phone number. Um, we'll look for other company. And that's why I should see it gives you business name. The courts operate under many different names. That's why I choose phone number and search. There you go. And then you click email Dunn's number. Can you see that? Yeah, okay. 
and you put in your email address and within 30 seconds you should get an email oh there's it just doesn't come on a list it comes in an email or something yeah you I'm, you want to do this one at a time and now because i work in the credit repair space i'm going to show you something interesting or the business credit building space um where is it it's in my downloads let me look credit okay this is going to be fun I closed the chat, so if somebody's trying to send something in chat, don't, um, here you go. Now, since I had their DUNS number, this is actually a service you have to pay for. Um, because I work in the industry, I didn't have to pay for it. So this is their business credit report through Credit Safe. They have a 98 rating, which means they pay their bills on time. You can see um, that they're really good. Uh, derogatory legal, I don't know what that means. It's been a while since I played with this reports. That's funny. Ain't nobody got no $30 million liens on them. <laughs> Not yet. Were those definitions right there, right underneath it? it it's, it's a guide to see the key. Um, every credit report, business or personal, has how to read um, these things. Uh, business credit is so much easier to understand than personal credit. So uh, here, it says derogatory legal, number of value of tax liens, judgments filed in the last six years and nine months, plus bankruptcies filed in the last nine years and nine months total dollar value is shown in brackets. So there's $662,000 of derogatory legal liens based against the commissioner's office of Middleburg, Pennsylvania. But they still have a good score. That does not make sense to me. And thank you, Maudi, for pointing that out. Um, gives me more time to play with these reports. Now here. What is that? Uh, what, what's that website you're, you're in? Uh, this, this is a report that I have saved from Credit Safe. It's something you have to pay for. I was lucky enough to have a trial because I work in the industry. And I pulled everything that I could possibly pull. So here's their international database, everything related to um, the area. This is not the report I want to show you. What I want to show you is uh, We'll just go one by one. I have a bunch of them. Snyder County Courthouse. Okay. Look at their SIC description. Colleges, universities, professional schools. It says Snyder County Courthouse. Now, no derogatory legal in parentheses. They have a 50% rating. Oh, wait. No, here, though. Six hundred six. Was that the one PJ, PJ hit? <laughs> oh, he's not helping me in my case, but I, 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 uh, um, I want to learn how to hit it. Now I'm, I'm scrolling down quick because I, I want to find something specific. All right, look at this. So additional contacts, and we'll pull this up. Let me get down to the additional contacts. Uh, this is a different report. All right, Harold Wolfel Jr. He is administrator according to this particular business. He is a retired judge, not even serving on uh, the judiciary board anymore. Well, don't they own the courthouses, the judges? I don't know. 
Yeah, I, I mean, heard somewhere I, that the judges own the courthouses. Now, I, I, you know, who owns what anymore? When we, yeah, when I think we, that they own the courthouses and they lease them out to the city. That's where they get their money from. Well, they do have the retirement account, if that's what you're referring to. Now, Penn State Co-op. This is the fun one. Uh, well, we did this one. Let's do this one. All right, Snyder County Courthouse again. College and universities. Uh, I hope I didn't open up the same report because the names are similar. Can, can um, could you look up my court? Because I've been looking my court up on this thing for the past, oh my gosh, it's been so long. I've been trying to figure this information out and I cannot find it. What's the phone number? Um, well, that's that's the problem. The phone number for them, they have a bunch of different phone numbers. I'm not sure. I can tell you. I yes. can email you. Well, not email, but in the chat, send you the link. Well, uh, this is to find the Dun & Bradstreet number. What I'm showing you here with the credit safe reports, this costs money. No, yeah. I, I know. I understand that. I'm looking for the Dun's number for my court. Oh, that's fine. Here, what's the court? Just tell me. Uh, Gordon D. Schaber County. Gordon D. Letter D? Yep. And then it's S-C-H. I got it. Yep. I think we did it for you before. Or not, well, we, I think we pulled up your court. In Sacramento. Here's their main number. We'll go here, control C. We'll go to Dun & Bradstreet. Control V, search. Look, they got two. There's no actual computer, that's why I told you. Well, I was looking on my phone. Maybe it's because I was looking on my phone. Um, Dun & Bradstreet is not mobile friendly, so that could be but now every phone number you can find related to this courthouse, you want to pull their Dun & Bradstreet number. At least then you'll have it. A Dun & Bradstreet number proves that they are a private for-profit corporation. And then what you do is you have to do a 4506A. Let me see if I can pull it up for you. I think I have it. Okay, so you have the Dun & Bradstreet number. Now you know they're a private for-profit corporation. Form 4506A, request for public inspection or copy of exemption of political organization IRS form. And there's some really good videos on YouTube. They're like less than five minutes. Teaches you how to fill them out. Um, here, I'll, I'll, if you want to bear with me, I'll pull up the ones I filled out because I saved them. And if anybody has a question when I look this up, go ahead and uh, go ahead and ask. Is this is this helping people? Just tell me if this if this is not helping. I'll change the subject. No, very good. Uh, okay, Talk. downloads, I got go here, ECC redemption, kernel defense, and here is a 4506A for the courthouse. Here it comes. No. Where'd it go? There you go. I'll give you guys a second to look at that um, because I'm going to go get another glass of water.
So any questions? There's the verbiage here, and I'll read it in case it's too small for you guys to see. But in box four, reason for request on the form 4506A, a business under the name of Court of Common Pleas of the 17th Judicial District of Pennsylvania Snyder County Branch refuses to provide their W-9 and required IRS government information letter confirming status as an instrumentality of government. And then you get a letter like this. And in, I'll, instead of holding it up to the camera, I'll just scan it in, give me a second. What? Yeah. Hold on. Right. Is that a question? Chris, was that a question? No, it was a slip. Oh, okay. Now I've, I've gotten a lot of these letters back with the 4506A. I'm going to Sorry, my, my scanner is pretty advanced. I have to do extra things, but just another minute or two, just another minute, bear with me. Um, IRS. Five, four, five, oh, six, eight. Okay, and I'm gonna change the quality, go back down to 300, and we will just, I'll preview. Almost done. Scan. How's how's I know I keep asking this. How's the class? Because I don't I want to make sure everybody's getting what they want. I think it's helping. Yes, um, very much. The very the interesting thing I'm, thing I'm waiting for is to find sureties. So <laughs> it's find like what do you mean to find sureties? I need one more person to assign my, um, one more person to be a surety for me to send out my trust packs. Well, Marianne can do that. She's an SPC and doesn't know it. <laughs> Marianne? <laughs> well, she's muted herself. No, she's, she's, she, she can do it. I just don't think. Between her and I, we know how. It's a signature, right, Marianne? Uh, if you say so, David. <laughs> I didn't say so. Somebody else did. Uh, yes, I, yes, I am a secured party creditor. Unbeknownst to me, I have been since 2014. Oh, wow. Well, I only need, I only need one more person to sign for me. So if you would be willing to sign for me, I would greatly appreciate that. That's been holding me back the past couple of weeks. That's fine. I, I'll do whatever you need done. I'll send you a, a chat message with my email. So okay. Email. Peachy. So this is the 4506A. This is what you mail out. And then the IRS gives you this letter back. Uh, as you can see, Court of Common Pleas, 17th Judicial District, Court of Common Pleas of the 17th Judicial District, okay, and they tell you, we can't, we've received your request, we can't provide you copies, they're either unavailable or they don't even have them at all. Okay, so... Here's what we did because we chased them down the rabbit hole. We found their Dun & Bradstreet number. 
Um, do this again. If you guys, this is the homepage of Dun and Bradstreet. If you ever see this, you go here to Dun's number lookup. Dun's number lookup. Now this is the court, clerk of courts number. Control C. We're going to select other company again. Um, this is a refresher. Everybody saw me do this. We're going to choose business phone number and control V and search. If they have a Dun and Bradstreet number, they are a private for profit corporation. So that's why we do the 4506A and then we wait for the reply. Now, if you guys want to bear with me a second, I'll look up the proof on why you want to do this and I'll show it to you in the call because what, what they have to show you is what's called a government information letter or government inspection letter. And the IRS should have that regardless of when the tax periods were for. If they've ever filed it as an instrumentality of government, that's how I'm taking it. Exactly. But what I'm looking at, what, what it's saying is that we can't provide you copies of the forms. Look below. The forms are either unavailable or open to public inspection under federal uh, under IRS code 6401, I think that's something that we should look up, 6104, or destroy. It's been six years since the end of the processing year. How, do, how, how are they destroyed under the processing year? I have an information, uh, uh, a letter of determination, they, they, they should have that. And come on, they come on. They got the social security number back from nineteen whenever, whenever somebody filed for uh, a what you call it, a social security card. Come on, man. Hey, you know how much time do I want to spend going down this rabbit hole before I start executing? No, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that that you go down to a a, a rabbit hole. I'm just I'm just making a statement. Oh, I agree. I agree. You're right. That's not having a fucking form. Come on, really. Really? I mean, all right, so now here's what government information letter is. I went to the IRS, I Google searched government information letter. This is from the IRS website, and let's just read this. Government entities are frequently asked to provide a tax-exempt number or a determination letter to prove its status as a tax-exempt or charitable entity. For example, applications for grants from a private foundation or charitable trust organization generally require this information as part of the application process. In addition, donors frequently ask for this information as substantiation that the donor's contribu contribution is tax deductible. Now here, government units. Government units such as states and their political subdivisions, are we all in agreement that a court is a subdivision? are not generally subject to federal income tax. Political subdivisions of a state are entities with one or more of the sovereign powers of the state, such as the power to tax. Typically, they include counties or municipalities and their agencies or departments. Okay. An entity that is not a political subdivision, but that performs an essential government function may not be subject to federal income tax pursuant to code section 115, paragraph one, I believe. The income of such entities is excluded from the definition of gross income as long as the income one is derived from a public utility or the exercise of an essential government function and two, accrues to a state a political subdivision or a state or the District of Columbia. Contributions made to entities whose income is excluded under Section 115 may be tax deductible as contributors. So, they have to show you this letter if they're operating as a government entity, and then they have to report 
their monies. Now let me show you something interesting. There is a code that tells you, that tells them that any monies made by a court has to be deposited with the treasury. Give me a second to look that up because I just thought of it and I wasn't prepared to show it, but I got it here. I got you guys. Uh, and again, if uh, you guys have questions while I do this, or if I'm getting boring, tell me. Um, okay, so here is my open office records request. And just for the sake of conversation, I'll scan it in so everybody can read it on the screen. It's not something I was prepared to show tonight, so bear with me. Everyone having fun? I am. I'm doing all the talking, but I'm having fun. David, we enjoy listening to you. I was told that I have a face for radio. What? Oh, <laughs> man, it's so cold. <laughs> All right, maybe I have, well, I, I do work on my voice. I'm, I, I think I sound nasally, so I try to talk in my throat, but I, I'm just naturally, this is me. Um, if I sound... Uh, high pitch that's because I am again. Oh, you know what I forgot? Damn it. Uh, let's look at the call to all thing. Press reply settings. Sorry, I did this. Give me, bear with me. Hello. Okay. Preview. Okay, preview's done. Scan's almost done. And as soon as it's done scanning, it'll pop up and we'll see it all on the PDF. So um, when you're trying to become a government entity or applying for government status, there's also application forms you have to ask for. And I made an open records request office um, through my county and that's what I'm going to show you guys now is their response uh, today's day. yeah this is it so this is one of their pages and here's what I want to illustrate to you guys is the Snyder County Commissioners do not have any government information letters issued by the Internal Revenue Service, nor do they have copies of application 1023, which is what they have to fill out to be a government entity, or application 1024, or other relevant tax returns in their possession. Now follow the logic with me. Tell me where I'm wrong. We filed the 4506A, we got a reply, they said they're not a government entity. Now, 
we have a response from the county solicitor, which is uh, the highest accountant. If I understand what the solicitor is, he's the highest accountant, money person, and uh, legal authority in my county for Pennsylvania. I could be wrong. I really don't, I don't like the guy. And now they just told me on record from my FOA request that they don't have a government information letter. And let's go back to this. We have their Dun & Bradstreet number through their phone number. So I guess this is where the mic drops. Are you a court? Are you a government entity? Or are you a for private, a, a, not a, a private for-profit corporation? Tell me, tell me if this makes sense to somebody other than me. Oh, I saw, I saw chat lighting up, so I'll, I'll pull up the chat. It's just the links that you shared. Oh, okay. That form is signed by Lori, can you? What do you mean that form corpse that? Let me get caught up on the chat. Okay, that's from Marie, that's from Lori. That form is signed by a citizen concerning. Uh, I guess you're talking about the COL form, yes. And that's your all caps name, that's not your upper and lower case name. And then Marie shared a link or something. Um, am I getting too off on a tangent for everyone? Or can we agree that I just proved my court is a private for-profit corporation and I have all the proof to- Yeah, I would, I would list that under exhibit B on your next case. <laughs> next case? I just want this one done. After this, I'm gone, Don. <laughs> makes sense though? Did it make sense to you? Yeah, just said, proves that they ain't, they ain't shit. They ain't nobody. Well, well, what about Modi? Because she didn't know how to do this. I walked her through the steps. I showed her all the forms. We have this I, on recording. I think I'm pretty good on it. I might have a couple more questions, but like, uh, like I said, I'll email you. So I'll talk to you through email. I'm going to get off you guys. I have to go get something to eat and I've had a long day. It was nice talking to you guys and I appreciate the help. Marianne, I'll email you. And thank you, you guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks, Modi. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. Um, okay. Um, I'm looking for something. And, and when I find it, I'll pop back on. I'm going to show you something that's going to put everything in proper perspective. Let me find it because I don't want you all to say, oh, he's just talking out the side of his neck. I want to show you. All right, so just give me a second while I, while I find this. That's that's cool, man. We're waiting. Uh, as long as nobody wants to get off or if somebody wants to talk about something else, we can we can pause. Um, I was told. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I was told. Um, I was taught how to pretty much the moment there's like a court date for any ticket, anybody coming after you, you want to automatically send the W nine to that entity boom just bombard them so that you can get time because a month you know it can it really just like <clears throat> gangs up on you all of a sudden and while you're sending that w9 uh like for any court you want to send it to the judge so i, I my question is is that so what do y'all think about that um, be, just because it's, uh, I'm open mic and I'm screen sharing. I asked for the W-9 through the clerk of courts. I was refused. I filed a motion for the W-9s and bonding information. I was refused. I have what about the judge? What about I'm, if you send it to the judge, the, the owner of the court? I didn't do that. So that could have been a step I missed. Um, you know, we're all learning together. So when when you're first dealing with the 
uh, the fact of being arrested and then having to go to court and trying to decide if you're going to hire a lawyer and all the stress that you go through, a lot of things fall through the cracks. So it might have not been a thought at my time, nor an idea in my head or, or any notion to do or execute. Um, it's just, you know, I was messed up for about eight, nine months just out of the sheer stress of things. Um, I suffer from insomnia. I can't handle stress and, and, you know, going down these rabbit holes to get self-taught and uh, to have the uh, mental ability just to hold on just a little bit so I can get to this point and, and uh, um, just tell people what I've learned and what I'm doing in my case. Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a very long struggle. So that did not answer anything you just asked, did it? I see Audra's joined the call. Hi, Audra. Hi there. Sorry I'm late. It's been a very long day for me too. Had to had to take a break here. Dom. Oh, that's that's what the topic is. Uh, we were from the last call you were on, we we're pretty much following up with my progress on the ten ninety nine uh, the GSA bonds, uh, what I decided to do, we covered a bunch of, I, I put out the idea of using the IRS tax forms, but I don't know how to fully execute them. Um, we hinted on 1099A, the case, but- Have uh, you, um, let me ask you something before you go any further. Have you watched uh, Gene's class on uh, the legacy class number 10? I don't think I watched that one. I've I've listened to a lot of Gene's stuff. Um, you should you should look for that. That's that's out there. Look for it. It's very informative. He comes up with a letter letter rogatory after like two hours. Or so. I don't remember the exact timeline on that, but it's after like two hours. He reads the whole letter rogatory, what he sent to the judge in chambers. Uh, uh. I found a copy of his letter rogatory and I filed it into my case and, and it was dismissed for nonsensical. I might have executed it wrong, but I did it twice. Yeah, when you get a minute, go 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 check out legacy class number ten. That stuff is that's wow. That's some wow stuff right there. Cool. Good looking out, Don. I appreciate that. Yeah, good look at that. That's an interesting that's an interesting class. He makes us all look like dumbasses. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go well, watch he, it. He's also very vulgar. <laughs> Gene Keating, Legacy 10. Yeah. Does that look familiar? Three hours? Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, High Frequency Radio. That's Yusef L. Yeah, he's got some good stuff. He got a lot of Gene stuff, too. Yeah. He's got interviews with Gene. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. I've I've seen, I've, I've seen a couple of them, but it's just when those videos are so long, and I'm looking for something specific. You know, 45 minutes is about all I can give. Yeah, he makes us look like we're dumb. I mean, he just <laughs> he just makes it look so stupid. You know what I mean? I did I did have enough. I did watch and review enough of Gene's material, and all he says is, "You just have to read the instructions." Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I got out of most of his stuff. Just read the instructions, and when he reads it to you and tells you what they are, it's just like, wow, it is that simple. Well, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, sending this stuff to the judge doesn't. Now I'm going to say this from experience. Okay, please do. Uh, sure. I had I had a friend who was uh, who got her kids taken from DCF, um, and uh, well, I. Once the, uh, you know, everything was said and done, you know, I, I pretty much told the attorneys that if they didn't return the kids by a certain date or by the next court hearing, and I showed some documents, I showed a UCC one, $55 million, uh, showed a order for, order for removal to federal district court, told them that if they didn't return the kids by the certain date that I was going to file this documentation with the IRS and they were going to be liable for $50 million in taxes based on the unlawful conversion of transfer of estate property. Okay. 
And I said, all the Title 18 codes are coming out. All the criminal codes, everything's coming out in federal district court. The next court hearing, not only do they give the kids back, they, they waived the 10 days and got rid of the shit, okay? They just, they, they backed out of it, vacated the case just by telling them that. And that was without the judge. That was just dealing with the attorneys. You know, I, I, heard, um, I heard something similar by Carl Lentz just by saying, uh, give my property back and the kids are the property. Well, I told them, I, I told them how they were liable for a tax. They didn't understand. I told them, I was like, well, under Title 26, Section 21 through 2101 through 2107 through 2000, uh, 21 through 2107 and 2001, 7001, they're liable for a transfer, you know, of a state property. I you know, also said to them, I said, uh, I said, you guys appointed a guardian ad litem in the case for the, for the children. I said, where do you get the authority to appoint a guardian ad litem? I said, under the Power of Appointment Act, the 1951, under Title 20, 26, Section 2514 and 2038, where can you prove that you have the power of appointment? And they didn't know what to say. Their eyes got big. The necks started jerking back. They wanted fingerprints from, from everybody in the household. I said, I'm like, who the hell are you people? I said, I don't even under contract with you. You, you, you come to my house. You, you're demanding stuff. You want fingerprints. I said, you want pictures. I said, look, I'll agree. I said, you want to agree? I said, right now, you, you cut me a check for 20 grand, and you can have your fingerprints. And, well, you know, they, they, they couldn't believe – they ain't nobody ever told them this shit before. And, well, I got the kids back. They never they, – they didn't get no fingerprints. They, they got rid of the case. It's done. They won't mess with me. I'll tell you that shit. You know, I – I don't Sometimes know. it's not always about the judge. It's about the person bringing the claim. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a real party in interest. Or, no, no, I don't have children, um, let, alone, let alone a girlfriend or a serious relationship, but um, that's enough about my personal life. Uh, I, I've been seeing a lot of CPS and, and children getting taken away from families, loving families, and... Um, it's just, you know, it's insane to see it. May I interrupt? Please. Don just said something really important about this state and, and keeping the focus on that and knowing the U.S. codes behind it and knowing who you are and what you're actually dealing with. Because, um, you know, I looked at the, I think it's the 301 form, the COL form that you had. It said it's signed by a citizen. If you don't know who you are and keep that in your head, and you sign that form and send it in, you're changing your status automatically. That's not your form if you're going through this process. Yeah, I, uh, and no I, didn't a, I didn't file a single documentation. Uh, I just spit all that crap to them and they gave up. Yeah, and it's not about the judge. The judges aren't the ones that we need to be attacking. It's the prosecutor that's bringing the case against you. Right. That's your adversary. And everybody's forgetting that. The judge is just there as a, as a the balance in the middle. And yeah. even though it sways the other way because we become so uh, ignorant of the facts, um, everybody tries to go out and attack the judge in the court. You need to learn, and if you've listened to Patrick Devine, it's about the prosecutor. That's who you need to be talking to or sending your paperwork to. Send a judge a copy but, and file a copy with the court, but you're not sending it to the judge. You're sending it to that prosecutor. And you've got to keep that in mind. Um, the prosecutor's going to play dumb a lot of the time, but he's going to hear you. And even though he pretends not to hear you, he hears you. And he knows the judge hears you. So, well, yeah, you just go after him in his, in his private capacity. It don't matter what you file in the court. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's what they're going to deal with outside the court if, if, you know, if they don't comply. You know what I'm saying? He's liable no matter what. Right. And he's, he's taken that he, – he's taken that uh, – a position to to take the, the heat for whoever he's suing um, as a prosecutor. So you you got to know your place, know who you are, and that's that's what I see is missing all the time. Is people forget what we're dealing with. It's not straw man. It's not a dead thing. Yeah, it's here's, real. It's here's the a estate. good question to ask yourself: Who's executor of your estate? You or the judge? Yep. In court, it's the judge, unless you claim your executorship. No. 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 Judge ain't nobody. 
Okay. Enlighten. The prosecutor is. Or your attorney, if you hire one, he takes your position. Because he's acted in your state and representing you. So, is it true you can fire the prosecutor? Because I'd like to do that. No, you can fire your attorney, but you can't fire the prosecutor because you don't want to fire the prosecutor. He's the banker trying to take your money. He's trespassing. You want him to pay you. Put your bar card out there, buddy. That's your insurance card. Oh, uh, yeah. I asked, I asked for that. Just a for that agent. He's just a transfer agent under 3002 of uh, Title 28. Yep. Audra so, says judge equals referee, and she's right. Exactly. So when we when we discuss these things, because I research too, and I get totally confused too, so I'm not saying anything. I'm saying what I say to myself. Remember who you are. Remember your position in the in the in the puzzle, or the game, or the court, and and that's where I see people going all over the place. I do it too, so don't take it the wrong way. But what David was saying, or or Donald was saying, was. Um, you know, you're the executor of this state. That's the key thing in, in this thing because what is it? 31 USC 363.6. The definition is a minor is someone that hasn't taken over their estate. If you're a minor, they're going to attach an attorney to you to represent you. Right. You've got to take over that estate. It, it's not about the money. It's not about the value. It's about taking over control of who you are and what you have, um, what you're dealing with. Be a grown up. Put on your big girl panties or your big boy britches. And step up to the plate and hit that ball out of the park. Right. That's why and you can't go in. You can never go in. I don't know how you, I don't know what kind of case you got going on, but I know if you go into court and you're the name, you just represented yourself to being a dead person under Rule 601. Now you need an attorney. What Rule 601 under what? The dead man statutes. 601 for what? Just, Rule 601. You can Google it. It's, it's just rule, just, it's, it's under. It's in the court rules of Title 28. You can just Google Rule 601. Okay. It'll come up under Cornell Thank Law. You. you can look at it. Yeah, I want to look at it because I, I was one of the older people that put this information out. So I'm real careful about saying dead man rule or anything well, dead because it's not even – it's a person because it's in the state. Well, that's the presumption. Well, that's Say the again? presumption that you're dead, that you're incompetent. You're, you're an infant. Yes. Right. So when you say that, when you say you're the name, you just come into court being the estate. You just ad admitting to being the estate and that you're liable because the and estate is the debtor. And if you admit to being that, you admit to being ignorant and they have to have, in the court right. sense, an idiot. Well, that's why they ask because you, you can't leave. That. That's why they ask right. you if you're going to hire an attorney or are we going to appoint one for you? You see what Correct. I mean? Yes. Yeah. So you have the only person that can come into court is under rule 17 okay an executor administrator bailey trustee conservator guardian those are the only positions you can come into court and bring a claim okay who are you exactly and i will read these rules and know them next time they're under title 28 rule 16 601 well, you, well if you go into cornell law and you well if you google the you know, any rule, okay, it'll come up in Cornell Law, then you can just flip back and forth, and you can just go through all the rules from Rule 1 to God knows how far it goes, you know what I mean? And you get an idea of what's going on, you know what I'm saying? Right, well, I, yeah, I've already done this in court, it works, on the private side. And that's that's why I had a, I put in the chat room, I really, really have a problem with the 301 form, the COL form, because it's signed by a citizen. And that's a key thing, the two things they're going to ask you in court, first thing is, who are you and are you a U.S. citizen? Can you read and do you know who you are? And if you fill out that form, you don't know who you are. Well, that's a trick. You know, I mean, I, I get confused about that U.S. citizen because I got no documentation that says anything about a U.S. citizen. Birth certificates don't say nothing. The license don't say nothing. So I don't understand what you're talking about. What's a U.S. citizen? Uh, it's your state because every U.S. person is born as a citizen or a national, and that's the estate. You know, I go into the driver's license bureau, and they ask me that. They, they do that stuff. You know, you swear under the penalty of perjury you're a U.S. citizen, blah, blah, blah. I said, do you even know law? Do you even know what you're talking about? I'm like, are you qualified to even ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> it's just insurance. They just look at me. Okay. I said, if you want to know what a U.S. 
fitness is, is I said, go look under Title 28, Section 3002, Part 15, and go tell me what that says. There you go. All right. It's, uh, it's an instrumentality. That's all. That's all. The only thing I've been able to find on it. Right. So all right. I'm going to back out because Jean needs to talk, but thank you. All right. Who got the screen? Could you let it go, please? Yeah, I'll give me a second, Jean. All right. Stop sharing. Should be you. Okay. So here's the thing. <clears throat> you have to do the W-9. You can do an open records request too. I just, but, yeah. but you have to do a W-9. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you why. Okay? Here is the response. Now, watch this. I did this by going on the county's website where it says contact us. And I put this in. Now, watch this. Look at this email. Let me blow this up for some of y'all so y'all can see this real clear. And I'm going to show you some stuff. All right. Everybody see this? Okay. Good morning, Mr. Hill. The following is a response to your open records request. So I did an open records request. Okay. Uh -huh. Watch this. A W-9 for the Magistrate Court. The Magistrate Court of Houston County is funded by the Houston County Board of Commissioners. Therefore, the Magistrate Court does not have a W-9 in their name. Please see attached W-9 for Houston County Board of Commissioners. This is the AIN that is used for the Magistrate Court. Everybody hear that? Everybody got that? Okay. Is that clear? All right. A forest statement for Judge Angeline Simons. Simons. Okay. No such document exists. For Agent Registration Act. Since Judge Simon is not foreign, Agent Foreign Act doesn't apply, which is bullshit because she has a bar card. She is a licensed attorney. Wrong. I want to say something. I've read through the um, Foreign Net Registration Act. There is an executive order that tells you that they are all exempt. And we are foreign, not them. They are not foreign to the entities that they work for. We are foreign to them. And that's where we're missing the boat. And I'm, I just think about what I'm saying. We're wrong on this one. As a, okay. As a okay, and that's fine. And that's that's fine. And saying this is the thing, like you, all right, when people put stuff out here, you got to do your due diligence, okay? Seriously, okay? Because anybody, listen, anybody can come and sell you a shit pie, you know? Oh, I would never eat a shit pie, G. Yes, you would. Everybody would. You know why? Because basically what they do is they bring you a cherry pie and they put a little shit in it. And the next pie is a little more shit. Until you get to the point you get accustomed to eating the shit. And then eventually all you got is shit, no cherries. Okay? So you got to do your due diligence to find out what the hell's being said. All right? An anti bribery statement, the magistrate court has no such document. Oath of office, please see attached. Okay? All right. So here's the W-9. Now I'm going to show you the beauty of the W-9, because the 4506A, uh, I'm getting ready to send out about 50 of them, all right? I already sent out 12, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to send out 50 of them. I got a whole freaking list, and I'm, I'm everything I can freaking think of. Penn dot, um, Philadelphia <laughs> Parking Authority, uh, Pennsylvania Supreme Court, uh, Court of Common Pleas, City of Philadelphia, I'm going to hit all these jokers. Department of Veterans Affairs, oh, yes, I'm hitting them all. I'm hitting them all. And and now watch this. So let's get back to this this, this W-9. Hey, G. Penn, since we're both from Pennsylvania, we should connect after this call. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, my email is, is uh, gpen61 at gmail.com. Hit me up. 
All right, I'll, I'll do that one. This has a spell doing the thing up there. It should be up there somewhere. Okay, all right. So, name is shown on the income tax return. Houston County Board of Commissioners, okay? So, go over here on number four. Payroll, co payee code, not applicable. Exemption from whatever, not applicable. Okay, I don't care. I don't care. What I care about is box number three. And you see this? Boom! There it is, right there. There it is. See other, other, other C instructions. County government, right? Can I put the sauce on it? Are y'all ready for the sauce? I'm ready. Pour that sauce on. Um, I got some special sauce for y'all. All right? So watch Here's this. Good. I'm going to hit, I'll, I'll put a whole bucket on, man, because this, this, this is the beauty of this. Because when I put this 4506A in, right, I'm going to address it just like this. House and County Board of Commissioners. Boom. And, and, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to throw this puppy. Uh-oh. Some of the sauce stripped out the pan. I'm going to throw this puppy on right here. I'm going to throw this puppy on right here, right? So watch what's getting ready to happen now. Does everybody see where it says Part B or Part 2 certification? Mm hmm Yes. Everybody see that? Scroll down a little. Oh, a little bit more. Yeah. No, no, no. I can't go no further because that's the sauce. The sauce is underneath there. But oh, okay. Y'all see this right here. This is all y'all need to see for right now. Hey, man, you, you need to pour out that Parmesan, man. I, 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 I just spilled the sauce. There's the sauce. There's the sauce right there. Certification. Under the penalties of perjury, I certified that. Boom. That's a rare event right there, man. I don't think I've ever seen some county officials come at you with some penalty of perjury crap on their own behalf. Okay. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Now. This is not Jonah Bay's. This ain't Yousef's. This ain't G's. Whose form is this? IRS. IRS. Okay. okay. All right. So now, when I take it, and I'm going to keep this W-9. I knew it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my 45, uh, 4506A in. I'm going to put this number in here. And the IRS is going to come back with, uh, can, and see, his is different. I don't know why your, your letters look different than mine. But uh, um, hold on a second. Uh, 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 oh, shoot. I can't find my thing. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Where'd you get the 58 number? Is that the, is that the W? Is that the EIN for the court? That's the, the number from, um, that's the number from the, uh, um, that's the number that they gave me. So you had to ask, to have to ask, ask, a little bit later. You would have to ask them that. I couldn't even begin to tell you where they got that from. Um, hold on, so let me you, see if I can you find. You got that. You presented a W nine to the court, and they gave you filled out W nine. They did. They gave me a W nine. Yeah. What happens when they don't do that? Because. Hold on, but let me let me hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me find this 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 thing. Um, let me find this. Uh, let me find this. This is what I'm looking for. All right, here comes some more sauce. All right, to let you know, I have. And that's to the judge, right? No, that's this was the... I went on the county website. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Okay. In fact, I'll, I'll go there in a second. But everybody okay. see this here? Yes. All right. This is in response to your request on the uh, 2017 tax zip status of the Court of Common Pleas of who? Philadelphia County. We have no record of this organization having tax exempt status. Okay? That's one. Let's go down some more. Here's another one. These are the, these are the ones I really want to get here. I want to get them. Oh, I want to bury them fuckers. Okay? <laughs> That's right, because they're bidding on you. Here's another one. Now, what I did find out is, and if you remember, 
you go back to the email that the guy from the county sent me. And I really would like to look him up to find out who the hell he is, because he might be an attorney. Okay? Pin that. There you go, uh, Dave. There you, there you go, Dave. Pin that. You know Pin that is. Oh. Pin that. We have no record. No record. <laughs> right. But I'm going to go back and put, put down uh, Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. I'm going to make sure that that comes in that way. No. So that's what I'm going to redo. Okay. Um, I, See, the Philadelphia Board of Revision of Taxes. Hey, no mm-hmm. record. Okay. I mean, I can go on and on and on and on. It's like 12, 13 of them here. Just, just on this one. Philadelphia Sheriff's Office. Okay. Yep. No record. No mm-hmm. record. Okay. So let's go back to, uh, oh, snap. I lost my thing. All right, here we go. So let's go back here. All right. So you're saying that you're saying that they're not giving it to you, right? Correct. Okay. So watch this. Watch this. Let me find it. Ba, ba, ba. I'm going to start it. a GoFundMe page just so you can get a battery for that fucking smoke detector. Yeah, I, yeah, I would greatly appreciate it. All battery donations will be uh, as well. Okay, so here, <laughs> here's a couple of things. Okay, one. Right here. If you do not return Form W9 to the requester with a 10, you might be subject to back up withholding. So, if let's say, let's say, um, property taxes, they owe 11,000, uh, you know, $1,100. You send them $500 and you send a, a, uh, send them a 1099A. Right, and you send um, a notice of with backup withholding taxes withheld, and you pay the taxes via uh, 1040V to the IRS. Now I paid. Now if you want your money, you go get it from the IRS. Oh, did I just say that? Oh, okay. All right. Other thing. Hold on. Yeah, I'm way too much fun, G. Yeah, because I'm tired of these people screwing us. Me I'm too. Tired. I'm tired. Are, are you are you a private banker, or you don't have to be a private banker? No. No. Awesome. Okay. No. Thank you. No. Okay. Listen. 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 They tell on you. Guess what? I'm telling on you too. Come on. That's right. That's the, that's what they're doing to us. Mm-hmm. All right. I cannot freaking find it. Oh man, I know it's on here somewhere. And oh, you know why? I'm gonna tell you why. I, 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 all right, hold on, 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 hold on. I know why I couldn't find it, but I'm gonna find it for y'all right now. I'm gonna show it to you right now. You seriously have the Google search? How do you stream it? No. No, 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 no. I'm gonna tell you what happened. While I was trying to find that form, it was in an email. And basically, I got two monitors. I got, if you look up here, you see all these boxes open? I know. I, 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 have, I feel your pain, bro. Okay. Look, hold up, hold up, hold up. That's just one Chrome. Look okay. how many Chromes I got open. One, two, three, four, five, I'm, six, seven. I'm just, mess, I'm just messing with you. Just messing. All of them, all of them are loaded like this. That's not including... That's not including uh, the Opera and, and Firefox. Yep, I got them all too. I got them okay. all. All right, all right. So here's the here's the dilly. Here's the dilly, okay? Because I had I had got uh, something from somebody, and um, they basically asked for their their W nine, and they refused to give it to me. And I said, Oh, you have to give it to me, or else. Um, uh, let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Right here, bam, here it is right here. Here it is right here, okay? Now this is not much, this is not much, it's not much, it's $50, but you keep sending it, and $50. And, and what I did was, when I sent it the first time, I said, uh, I need your W-9, now nah, we'll just send you a statement. So I sent back and I put here, Fur- failure to furnish 10. You, if you fail to furnish your correct 10 to a requester, you are subject to a penalty of $50. 
for each such failure, unless your failure is due to a reasonable cause and not willful neglect. So I, I sent this back and put second request. Man, don't you know 10 minutes later that, that, that W9 was there? Okay. All right. Um, so civil penalty. Okay. Information with respect to withholding. Okay. If you make a false state, statement uh, with reasonable basis that the results in no backup holding, you're subject to a $500 penalty. Now, remember, go back, go back up here where it was saying here. If you do not return the W-9 to the requester with a 10, you might be subject to, to backup withholding. Well, guess what? You might. Yeah, as much as y'all, hell, y'all been putting me through? No, nah, you are going to be subject to backup. And I'm going to fill, fill out whatever documents I can to make sure I do it properly. And then when I when I when I have to go to court, I can say, well, Your Honor, I paid. They were subject to uh, federal uh, tax withholding, backup withholding. They want their money; they can go to the IRS and get it. That's where it's at. That's why it goes to the states so they can go get their money and get mine back. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, I mean, and and this is key. But the, the, the key point that I wanted to point out, and I'm not saying the open records request is not important. It is. That's how I got my W-9. So you can do a two-fold thing. You open requests, open records requests, or FOIA requests, the, 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 um, the 10, okay? And you request the W-9, okay? And in that, if they fail to do the open request, then you contact the attorney general. Then you also report them to the IRS. And I'm thinking with, with me, they have done the 211. a 211 and all that. I'm getting ready to go, go into all of that, but I got to well, send out some more 45. Please do, because I want to understand this, this IRS tax reporting. Say that again. Um, please do, because I want to make sure that I'm right with the, with the IRS reporting. The 211, the whatever else I covered, um, I want to get them all. Yeah, I exactly. Want all, I, want to, I want to send them all. Exactly. Well, see, and this is the thing. So you, you and see, here's the thing. So let's go back to, um, let's go back to this puppy here. So, so when I send out my 4506A for these jokers, when it comes back, they have no record Guess what? When I send it back, I send it back with the no record from the IRS. I send back this W-9. I say, uh, well, these people here say that they're, uh, what's about? Now, notice this. And I just noticed this when, when, when I pulled this out. I didn't notice it the first time. But they had something there, and they whited it out. I saw that. I thought you did that to cover yourself. No. I, I didn't, this is, I downloaded this directly from my email. And I was looking for the email, which either got archived or deleted or something. And that's why I went into to do the search on uh, how to unarchive the, uh, I, I was doing So why, why did you do it via email and not have paper copies? Well, see, okay. All right. I know, I know, I know you're a notary out in Atlanta, right? Or uh, uh, Georgia. I'm not a notary. I do deliveries for documents. I have notaries at my disposal for anybody who wants to get uh, expedited service to Lamar County. Um, in fact, I was just up in Lamar County yesterday and um, uh, dropped some documents and stuff off. So if you want, you need to hit me up. I can get it in there and get it out, um, which supersedes you mailing it in and then have to mail it to get authenticated and all that stuff. I hand deliver it all in there. I'll take good care. I'll take good care of you. All right. Um, all right. I'm opening up something. All right. So this was the original, this was the original document uh, that they responded to me. 
Now, what I was going to say was, let me go here. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you that um, um, okay, so this is this is the actual web page. So basically, what I try to do is I try to find emails. I like to do it by email, okay? Right. And the reason why is this. Uh, contact us. There you go. This is exactly what I did. I filled all this out, put the inquiry in there, you know, and um, they want to know how you found them, blah, 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 blah. And uh, you submit. And it was literally within a couple days. I got this back. Now, the other thing is, is this. Um, uh, and see, this is how I lost that email the first time because I wasn't in the right which one to call it. So I don't know who Carrie George is, but this is for Georgia. And I cannot promise you, I cannot promise you that it'll work in your state. I, in Pennsylvania, I know it's not going to work, David, because I tried. I, I never got anything out of Pennsylvania, so I gave up. You you know you don't know what I'm I'm getting ready to do, okay. but <clears throat> in Georgia, the 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 member directory is wide open. Oh oh, I found that for Pennsylvania. But did you? All right, all right. You're <laughs> you're you're okay. I I found it too. But are are, are your results? Are you going to get these results? And apparently. Uh, Carrie's not a lawyer. All right, so I'm going to put in that judge. And um, I'm going to put in that judge. And ta -da, there she is. And here I can click on here. And guess what I get? Email, phone number, fax number. Ah, she was admitted to the bar in 1987. She went to Georgia State University. Boom. So watch this. This one's going to blow your mind. And I and, and I bet you they're still trying to figure out how I got this news no, uh, email. Yeah, I know they're still trying to figure out how the hell I got his email. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send something in chat while you're screen sharing. Okay, and everybody see that there? Everybody see George that? Office of the Attorney General. Yeah, Christopher that's, Michael Carr. Yeah, that's his direct. I'm not gonna put that up, but <laughs> that's his direct email. I can get his direct. I got. I got his direct email right from here. Pull up chat. I put that link while you're screen sharing. See if you can get it. Oh, this is different. Oh, look at this. Yeah, see, see I got skills too, son. Yeah, I didn't say you didn't, man. I, look, this is why we're here. We're all sharing. I, yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, I'm not, listen, I'm not, not hey, saying hey, hey. I'm and just teasing. Either. I'm just teasing you. I'm just yeah, along, yeah. man. But thank you for that because this here, oh yeah, this and this is tools. So did you show, you shared that with everybody? Yeah. So that's what y'all need to do. You need to search around. You got to do your due diligence and searching around to find this stuff. Okay. All right. Because these are tools that we can use to help us, and we want them scratching their head just like they have us scratching ours hey okay. do, me a, do me a favor yes. go, back, go back to that link i sent you and look up the prosecutor because you're probably going to see that they don't carry insurance um yes. right. look up your prosecutor whatever you got 
No, we, we'll find them. It's, it, it's just like a Dun & Bradstreet thing. But this is for Pennsylvania. Yeah. Aren't you dealing with shit in Pennsylvania? I am dealing with something in Pennsylvania, but it, it, it would be the district attorney. Yeah, yeah. Look, look up an attorney. Go ahead, do it. Well, I got to find, I don't know who the district attorney is. <laughs> no, I mean, this is an older case. Yeah, that's, that's fine. He's probably retired by now. If this is an older case. Yeah, I have no idea who the hell the district attorney was at that particular point in time. Well, they'll still be listed as R. Um, retired? Yeah. Okay, D.A. Krasner. Okay. Well, um, yeah, look at all the faggots. So, speaking of Philadelphia, has every has anybody heard that currently in Philadelphia, there are 72 Philadelphia police officers who were pulled from duty pending investigation for racial hate crimes? I did not know that, but I get all, all the others. There was a group of eight in Texas or Florida or something like that. Uh, let's go to 29. Yeah, it's been a while. I don't know all of the uh, station. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. They're covering it up. Oh, look at this crap. Look at them hiding this crap. Oh, shoot. So they want to put six shards and 17.5 tons of cocaine seized in, in Philadelphia Airport. Ha, ha, ha. They don't want to put the 72 criminals that are on death duty. Oh, man. Um, let me see. Uh, All right, let me see if that'll that'll pull it up. There you go. Uh, please, oh, no, that's not it. Uh, yeah, they're hiding it. Oh, here you go, here you go. 72 Philadelphia police officers placed on administrative duty during social media investigation, officials informed. And I'll put that in the chat if y'all want to take a look at that. All right. Um, yeah, I, I I would have to. Um, so you said the uh, last name. Here, um, actually, don't bother. I'm, I'm going to send you a link. I'll send you a link right now. Last name. Pull pull it up in chat. That's the link for my um, I search by county. That's the link for my uh, prosecutor. Ah, okay. Yeah, see, they're not, they're not pulling it up. She's not in there no more. Um, Unless, then, then the case must have been handed over and they're controlling it. I, I think um, just what you would have to do a... Oh, no, 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 there she is, there she is. There she is. There she is. There she is. Yep, she's still acting. Yeah. There you go. Court claim. Oh, <laughs> this is beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right, I'm going to uh, let go of the screen share because I'm done. Hopefully, uh, what I shared was informational. If I can find the, uh, hell yeah. All right, I'll go back to screen sharing and let's uh, let's finish up this call because it's been a long call, and I want to make sure that we cover everything for everybody. G Pen, thanks for helping out. Um, no problem, man. And I sent you an email, by the way. Uh, see if you got it before the call ends. 
Uh, I'll check that now. That's in one of my many, many, many tabs that are open. I used your Gmail, Pen sixty one. Gotcha. gotcha. So, um, yeah. You had a lot to share. Uh, I missed it because I was getting a drink of water, but I know you were very, very vocal. Is there something you want to add? Or anybody? Blue, thanks for being on the call. We got Devo, we got Annette. Actually, uh, I told everybody I was a firefighter. My nickname at the fire company is Dave O. So uh, that's cool. Um, we still have Chris. Chris, did we cover everything? Because you were, you were talking about some stuff too. Yep, got it all. And then we got Aja. Um, hopefully I said it right. Uh, if you want to rehash everything or have a question to ask Aja, please feel free. Um, we started at 7. It's almost 10. So this has been a very long call. And we shared a lot of stuff. We, we always get good information. You guys, you hey, know. Thanks, Dave. Oh, you're very, is that Dave-O? Yeah, 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 thanks. I was just kind of in and out here, listening in when I can. Uh, I didn't, I, you don't need to thank me, thank Marie, but um, is there, do you have anything that you want to discuss or talk about or, or, or go into? Um, you know. Um, I know that there are a few people who were on the Zoom we did, um, the other night and um, I think Marie was on um, and um, I think I saw one other um, I was on it I was on it the other night yes so I want to I want to give y'all an update um, I have a hearing for the 23rd <laughs> and actually um, that's that the, the, the information I shared from that county that is the actual County. Um, oh, real quick. Um, I forgot. I didn't show you something else. Yeah. Uh, Here, I'll, I'll go up the screen if you want to share. Yeah. I, f I forgot to show you show show the other part of this. Uh, all right. It's all yours, man. All right. And this will be real quick. <clears throat> it's not much. It's it. Um, they attached the uh, W nine, but here. See that? There's the oath. The oath for office. All right. So here in Georgia, they actually have two oaths. They have this one, and then there's another one. Everybody see that? So some very interesting things here. Um, one, all cap name. Two, a citizen. All right. And this is the most important. So why is that important? Anybody know? Maybe you don't want to order their services. I, I couldn't hear you, Maureen. Maybe you don't want to order their services. One of them, okay, very key. Yes, that, that, that's one of them, services rendered. Okay. But but what's what's the other one? What what is what is what is the one that I can use to really tell the IRS say hey these people ain't paying their taxes? Didn't we? Is there also some type of um, penalty or you know like obligation that is um, fixed to the people that are receiving the funds? Wouldn't you do that with the IRS form 211? All right, let me let me do this. 
because you're you're not going to – I think if you see them side by side, hopefully the light bulb will come on. All right, give me one second. I got to go through my many boxes of emails, many boxes of uh, thingamajigs. Okay, here we go. All right, so let me, I, I'm going to leave this big for a second, okay? But right in here, okay? Funded by the Board of Commissioners. That's one. And there are the Therefore, the, the magistrate court does not have a, a, w, a W9 in their name. Correct. So the Board of Commissioners is a private, for-profit, corporate entity and is not a mentality of government, according to what we discussed in the call. Can I well, interrupt? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Please what do. This, and I think a little bit different than most people, so pardon me. I'm, I'm not trying to get anybody offended. What I would do is go and read your <clears throat> codes and standards for the state of Georgia, for the county board of commissioners and how their setup can be, because it st starts the state, and then read how this, the county charter, is, or whatever you call it, is set up. That will tell you what the duties of the magistrate court is under them. And if the state level, I'm going to try it back up here, if you go to the state level, it's going to say that they can have that under them. Because a, a school board in Texas will say they can have a foundation under them. Um, the magistrate court may be given permission through the state legislator to be under the county. And in the county charter will be where the board of commissioners talks about the magistrate court. Because the county board of commissioners is a county court. And that's what everybody's missing here. You're talking about a court within a court the, the county board of commissioners the, the word commissioners they are a court they are judges so you're, you're, you're right you're right you're right to a point you're right to a point i'm okay. I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you there's one there there's 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 two key things there's two key things that are here okay so i'm going to say something that Everybody um, should oh shoot! Everybody should should recognize. All right, what do you always hear people harping about? The court is a what? A bank. Exactly. So, uh, you try to open a, a, a bank account lately? Uh, it's already set up for me. It's called my estate. <laughs> I like the way you think, Larry. I like the way you think. That's what happens when we get these smart ass people. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, not being, I'm not being derogatory. I'm, I know, I'm, I can take it. I'm playing, I'm, I'm playing you in a, a compliment. All right. Deacon, so, we're also dealing with you and I in Pennsylvania, are dealing with a commonwealth, not a state. And, Lori, I believe you're from Texas, and the rules are totally different. Well, not, not okay. far off. And they are comparable, but it's so hard for us to find them in Pennsylvania than it is for you to find them in Texas. Because yeah. Pennsylvania has a special place in the country. You're, you're in a special place. We, we're one of the original 13 colonies, which makes things totally confusing. Yeah. But it's also the capital of the republic. Yep. And we have the highest Supreme Court there is. Yep. Yes. Okay. So... All right, and I don't want to keep everybody on the call. I'm just going to make this real real, real. All right, I gave y'all a hint, okay? The fact of it is, is this. The court is a bank, okay? They don't have an EIN, but however they're set up, if you're writing checks, okay, when I, when I filed this case, that check was made out to the magistrate court of Houston County. So how the hell are they cashing a check? Okay, that's made up in, 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 in their name and they don't have a bank account. I'm gonna tell you, the other thing of it is, the key point here with this chick's oath is this. 
she's re a, a recipient of public funds. Uh -huh. Okay, she's receiving funds. No, 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 the county is. Read the whole line. Be an employee of Houston County and the recipient of public funds. She right. receives from the county. Well, it's saying and being an employee of Houston County. Right. Okay. Now, who's Houston County? Is Houston County the same as Houston County Board of Commissioners? That's a question you have to research, but yes, it's a good exactly, question. Exactly, exactly. But the point of it is, is this, why isn't the check made out to House and County Board of Commissioners? There's a lot for that, and I'm trying to find it real quick. All right. Now, on top of that, the county I'm dealing with, the, the, the county Board of Commissions or Commissioners are doing business as the county sheriff. County sheriff is supposed to be an elected official separate from the whatchamacallit, from, from the county. Yeah, I found it. I found it. All right. Um, pull, pull up a Google search or I'll send you the link. But, um, no, 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 I'll get ready to let this go because the point of it was she's a recipient of pu uh, public funds. Okay. Uh, 20, wait, how, how it goes. 28, come on, come on, come on. 28, you go ahead, go ahead, you go ahead. You got it up, go ahead, just share it. No, I don't have it up. I was going to tell you to pull it up. I'll do it now. <laughs> While you do that, um, you got them on something. Her oath is uh, um, invalid because she works for <clears throat> the, the county commissioners, board of county commissioners. You've got their EIN number, and her oath is... Um, invalid because you have the EIN number proving the entity she actually works for. That's right. what you call them on. Yeah, because technically she's not a judge. And you've got them on the, the name of the company or uh, the entity that they work for. You have their EIN number and an email saying that this court, uh, the magistrate's court is under this title and here's their EIN number. Her oath was not taken to that entity. Therefore, who is she working for? That's the question to send to the attorney general, to the insurance commissioner, to uh, all the that people. Makes a lot of sense, Lori. That really does. Yeah, that's who you need to send it to. Okay, I'm gonna back up. All right. So um, to, to add on to G10, 28 USC 2041, deposit of money in pending or adjudicated cases. Here's the screen. All money is paid into any court of the United States or received by the officers thereof from any case pending or adjudicated in such court shall be forthwith deposited with the treasurer of the United States or a designated depositary in the name and the credit of such court. This section shall not prevent the delivery of any such money to the rightful owners upon security according to the agreement of parties under the direction of the court. Now I have a copy of my full request that said there is no such deposit of this money. So going back in the call where we looked at the Dun & Bradstreet number, we did, we did the tax returns, um, we did the tax forms, and then now I FOA requested this particular code, and I have, and I'll spare everybody the time for saying I have proof of it. I have proof that, that the county solicitor says they don't have this because they didn't deposit any money. So to what G. Penn said, to what he elaborated on, to what everything I said, we're all still talking about private bankings. And, and Lori, uh, yeah, Lori, I want to make sure I'm saying your name right. Um, you added a great tidbit of information because the oath of office was taken to a certain place. And when we're dealing with court, it's not there. If that, if I understand but you correctly. It doesn't exist with who they took the oath to because g -Pen may have to correct me. It said to Houston County Board of Commissioners and she took her oath to the Houston County. Uh -huh. So therefore, 
they're paying it to an entity that doesn't exist or you need to take that oath and ask for that EIN number for Houston County. <clears throat> then take the EIN and the letter that you received earlier about the magistrate's report report reporting to the Board of Commissioners and take that forward saying she did not take her oath to the Board of Commissioners, which she should have. Who is Houston County and who is the County Commissioner? Who is Who are these parties? Um, can you click also on the Court of the United States? Sure. While I'm um, sharing? Yeah, that definition. No, back where you were. Oh, okay. USC. And see where it's in blue, Court of the United States. It'll show uh -huh. a definition. Just click on it. Um, no, just click. Just normal click on it. Well, okay. Click on the States. blue highlighted. Normal click. Okay. The Court of the United States includes the Supreme Court of the United States, Courts of Appeals, District Courts situated by including the Court of International Trade, and any court created by an act of Congress, the judges of which are entitled to hold office during good behavior. The Court of the County is not set up by the Supreme Court, nor is it set up by an act of Congress. It is set up by the county commissioners and verify what I'm saying. 100% agreed. But double check it. Always double check what I'm asking. If it's set up by the county commissioners and not by anything else, even though they follow the rules of, of those above, um, it may be set up by the state. Um, check and see. Um, this code doesn't apply to them. Double check me because you may be able to trace it to the Supreme Court. Just check, double check it. All right, I'll, I'll do it. But it, I, I already know that my local courthouse that I'm dealing with is not a court of the United States. I have proof because I've showed it on the call. Right. I mean, when the county solicitor says we don't have a government information letter to, for you to inspect and we don't have all these tax forms and everything that you requested, which are what's needed to be a government entity, what um, are you dealing with? Then you go, where can I find it and which court has it? Because the higher court may have it in their state. What the lower courts may do is do their banking, because they're banks, they may be a sub-bank, of a higher bank that actually does the paperwork for them, i.e. the district court. So I would ask them, if you don't have it, would they have it in the district court or the Supreme Court of the state? See, that's new to me. So I'm so glad we had this call because, you know, I want to get my 20 million worth of bonds back. It's it's not 20 million. It's just credit towards, it's you're, you're thinking an FRNs, but who are the bankers? I'll take the credit. I have my credit account set up. I'll take them. I'll go spend it. Great. But, but see, here, here's the other piece of this. And I get what you're saying, but okay. here's the problem. I don't care where you go. We're dealing with what? Thanks. FRNs. Okay? FRNs, checks, credit, whatever you want. They have to go through the banks. This um, ends up in how, if this ends up with HJR 93... Well, I, yeah, but I'm not even going there. I'm just going there from the point right now. I'm trying to open a bank account and they want articles of incorporation. They want this, they want that. They need the EIN. They need the letter, the SS4 from the IRS and so forth and so on. It's a okay. 6575 from the IRS. Well, no, I, I, we had that conversation. Did and, we? No, not me and you, me and the person at the bank. And basically, she showed me where it was at, and it's actually a SS4. There's the one you fill out, but then there's the one that comes back that says CP575, but it's actually a SS4. And all it is is the one coming back from the IRS. But neither here nor there. The point of it is, is this. If you're dealing with banks, you need um, a freaking um, uh, a EIN or a social. You need well, letters of corporation, uh, articles of corporation, whatever, whatever, whatever. The credit union I'm currently dealing with, and this is why I'm trying to open up a new account, is that if I have something, I have a, a company named um, Bob, Bob, Bob's Ministry, and then I have Bob's Property and Trust, and they'll cash checks for Bob's Ministry, 
for Bob's ministry, but they won't cash checks for Bob's property and trust. Did you do a DBA? If you didn't do one, then you got to do one. Doesn't make a difference. They won't even allow you to do third part third party endorsements. What's the credit union? Is it maybe federal? No, no, no. It's it's one here in Georgia, local. Okay. Yeah, but they they won't even allow you to do third party endorsements. If the check, if whatever's on that line that says pay to the order, if it doesn't say what's on the account, they're not cashing. Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know. But that that's their rules, and that's the thing we have to understand. It's their rules. Um, that, that, here's the thing, I, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Do they know how to read? Because it's, it, it, everything comes back in your estate name to you in all capital letters and under the Civil Rights Act, um, I can't remember, from 1964, it says all bills and all invoices must come in all capital letters, meaning it must come back to the estate. They don't know how to read. You can bring the Civil Rights Act of 1964. You'll have to look into it uh, and find out where it says everything has to be in capitals. But what they're doing is they can't read. You are the authorized representative of that entity because they send you a check, get a or packet of checks first. They send you a check that has your all capital letters uh, entity on it. When you sign it as the authorized representative because they ask for your signature card right there, if anything comes back as a state and trust in that all caps name, they accepted it and they will accept a check coming back if you teach them you know how to read. Okay. Um, I posted a, a video in the uh, chat. I just um, got it, so it's, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a very interesting video. I would suggest everybody take a gander at that. <laughs> he talks about some stuff, and some of the stuff that we talk, <coughs> excuse me, on the call on Monday, and what we're in the process of attempting to do is we're, we're starting our own government. I'm tired of this crap. I, it doesn't align with what I'm doing. And um, we just need to know how to uh, go from here to there and start putting these jokers under international law, violations under inter international law. Sounds like Mark Stevens' violation. Nope. You know who I mean, right? I know who you mean, but that's not what we're attempting to do. Okay. So that's not okay. what this guy is talking about either. He's basically talking about the law of nations. So, <clears throat> well, um, how about we all do this? And uh, Lori, you were on fire tonight. Thank you for sharing everything. Um, it's ten after it, ten after ten, ten oh nine. We started at seven. Um, let's readjourn this conversation for another time if everybody wants to. Uh, let's keep continuing and sharing education. It is getting late for everyone. As much as I like to keep talking, I will and I can. Everybody knows that. Well, not everybody, but I can. I'm a salesman. Um, if we want to continue this discussion, let's get everybody back on the call. Let's say yes. We'll pin a hat in this. Otherwise, if there's anything that you guys want help on, on this call because we have 11 participants and uh at the beginning of the call we had 15 so everybody kind of trickled out what do you want to know what do you want to work on i'm sharing my process everybody else has information better than me to help me with my process but at the same time it helps you with yours this isn't about me this is about us we're a team we're a group can so, I say something of what I, what I see as a problem in the chat room that we have going? I, I see questions that um, people don't fully understand the process. They don't fully understand what they're doing, or they may not have the life experience to put them in the right place yet. 100% agreed, Lori. And we need to somehow get the, res I, the respect, the responsibility, and the... I guess the education behind it, the knowledge, um, and, and I'm new to the group, but that's what I see, and start standing that ground to where core is. What are we doing? Um, if, you, if you go away from the, the plot and the point of what, what we're here for, um, then, it, then those people that, that lack that, which is everybody, um, Agreed. 
we we lose our foundation. We don't have a foundation in this group to maybe people stick together and talk on the side, but from what I'm seeing just on the Friday calls and through the chat rooms, uh, people are going all over the place or they just may not get it yet with life experience. <clears throat> totally, totally agreed. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people. I'm trying to pull it all together. We uh, all are. But I think that's what this group needs to, um, to understand a little bit better of what we're doing because it's, you know, yes, you have to accept the estate. Yes, it does have value, but that's not what this is about. It's more about freedom and, and knowledge to handle yourself respectfully and responsibly. And a lot of people really need to understand what that means because things have changed in this day and age with, with edu education. Uh -huh. and I'm old and I had a classical education and it hurts me to see what's going on. I want to say something, but I don't want to be mom. Um, so the group as a whole really needs to have that talk at some point of uh, what we're doing, why, and to stop going after people, but know what their duties are. Well, why don't, um, because this is Marie's call, why don't you connect with her and see <clears throat> what kind of call you can put together? And I agree with you 100%. Um, there's, we're dealing with people from every different angle. Yep. I mean, poor, poor Modi, she has two cars, one's towed, and she's homeless. And um, she admitted this on a previous call, so I'm not like sharing private information it's public um you know she's just got married uh her husband has a problem um everybody else on these calls they all have different situations and me personally i have a different situation than everybody else as well so if we can kind of uh ebb the tide for everybody and get them focused on where they need to be where they need to start. If they're in this problem, then we get them circled back to start here and fix there. And, and you know, I, I work in credit repair, so it's, it's not an overnight process. Neither is uh, what you want to call it is an SPC thing. It's not overnight. And you have to study your ass off. And you have to know what you're talking about, just like you do. You dropped some serious information tonight, and it made a lot of sense. And a lot of people agreed with you in the chat. So you're not coming from. But it wasn't what I think. It's what is. Just like I had you bring up what's on the screen. What's yeah. the definition? Who, what, when, where? What's their job duties? Who do they report to? What, you know? what does it say in the statutes and codes and regulations? These are the things that people are forgetting. And just um, <clears throat> when somebody comes up, I call it air hockey stick sovereign citizen crap. Uh, and that's my personal title for some of the stuff that I hear. I have to look at it and then I go, okay, what's wrong with it? What are we as the people doing wrong? And what is the court doing right? because the court nine times out of 10 is right and the people are wrong and we're just complaining about it. Where is it that we can learn from what the court did right? We're upset about it, but what are we doing wrong? That's where I learn is from somebody else's mistakes and what, when, where, job duties and titles. It's a, a rod class basic. We're um, doing everything wrong. I mean, if you, if you caught the beginning of the call, you just saw me try to, uh, Fill up my GSA bonds and I'm going to do it. I'm gonna do it. Hey, G Pen, you got some static if you're trying to say something. No, I, I was going to say, I mean, the young lady was saying something about we're doing it wrong. According to who? According to them? No. According, to the, according to the rules, the statute, the rules of court, the according, statute. Yeah, according to them. We have to read. Yeah, well, we, here's we're the, not right. Here's the thing. Uh, my suggestion is for you to look at that video that I posted because he 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 talk he talks about that. And here's the problem. Okay, All right. these people, however they did it, they did it. Now, none of us, and this is one of the points that he raises, are signatories to the Constitution, any of these constitutions. Okay, 
Those constitutions were put in place for them to do what they do. Now, it has in there that if you don't agree with it, you have a right to, you know, start your own government. And that's the whole point that he's saying. Can I say something to you that might get you my point of view? Yeah, go ahead. Please, I'm really fine because I'm getting tired and this is- I'll make it real short. Very long call. Yeah, it's real important and real short. In Admiralty, there is a, a rule or law of Admiralty that if you put your foot on an abandoned boat, that boat's yours. That yep. ship. Yeah. Okay? The first thing the government does to you because your parents are ignorant of the law is put your foot on a ship and they are there to help you. First and certificate. When you know that, and it turns your way of thinking around and you realize if you see a little two-year-old go to the park and see a little two-year-old with their mom and how bad they act sometimes because they can be you know <laughs> terrible twos that's what we are and this is the way the world has been run for years they did it in different ways through the bibles and everything else so you can go through the history but right now this is how it works so when you do that your attitude and the way you look at it your perception will start to change that's what we need as a people. How do we change our perception to go in with what our paperwork says? We're not the adversary. We're not the enemy. We're the estate holder. The infant until we claim the estate. All right, but we got to learn how to do it with the right attitude, with the respect. Uh, I mean, you can walk. Okay, okay, okay. Let me say this. All right. I have, I have, I have in my family 70 years of Marine Corps service. Okay, I put my life life on the line for this country. Yep. And the same fucking things that I, I'm fighting for freedom for for this country, I do not receive. Okay, just oh, because you gotta get free. Right. So just because you got a little faggot running around in a white dress talking about he owns all souls on the planet, doesn't mean he owns all souls on the planet. You mean the just because you have somebody in a black dress? who says that they're a judge, doesn't make a judge. In fact, this very judge that I had a, a court case with, I was the plaintiff. They dismissed my case, okay? And I'm saying to her, just because somebody gives me a piece of paper, my mom gave me two, two birth certificates, okay? So I don't know who the hell I am. And just because somebody says that they, they I put my feet on something, I wasn't conscious of that decision. Just because my parents weren't aware and my daughter, I, I told them very emphatically, no, I do not consent. It's against my religious belief. It doesn't matter. Read the legal yeah, test. The point. Holding, hold on. They're holding your family to stay. She's you. right. She's right. That's under the Lieber Code and under Title 50 of the U.S. Once Code. again, that's their bullshit. But it's holding it for you because to play, you. I, if I don't choose to play, I have the right not to. Well, what? then don't play. No, you're only... You're only not but they have they have woven a so tightly knit trap that it's it's a, it's it's hard to escape. G Pen, you know what? Here, take an artist's perspective. Step away from what you're dealing with. Take an artist's perspective and look at everything. Look at everything. All right, you know better than everyone else. So you have your documentation. You have your military service. You have everything. You know the laws. You know this. You know that. And then you have to step back and realize they are fucking with you. Yep. And you know how. You know you know how to fuck with them back while they're fucking with you. You don't know how to escalate. Take the artist's point of view. And deal with the non-fuckery. I'm not saying you don't know. I'm just, you know, from my example. It's right in front of your face. It, it's right in front of your face. But I was told the other day with someone that's helping me, you make it so difficult and it's so easy because when you have a higher IQ like you do, um, you can't see the forest from the trees. Is what I and that's what I was told. Exactly, um, and I keep hearing so, the same thing too, Lori. So like you say and take a step back and breathe if you have time to do it sometimes you don't have time to do that and look at it in a different perspective and it might help 
but that's hard to do when you're in the middle of it. We're asking something really hard. It's true. We are in the middle of it. Um, I'm in, in the middle of my court case. And like I said, it's hard to grasp and keep hold of reality, really, because th there's so much going on. That's with you so much. They really do test you. And they're hard on you. They're, they're, they've got the guns. They point at you. Um, okay. And that's not pleasant. And that's a fact of what you're going through. Um, they throw you in a jail. That's a fact. So you're doing your research, you're doing everything you can do. You're doing what you need to do. It's just sometimes look, keep doing what you're doing, but also look at it in another perspective. And that's hard. I've had to train my brain to do that and look at what, not what I want it to be, not what I believe in, but just what is. What is that, like the definition right in front of us, what does it actually say? And you're good at that. But add it together is hard for someone with the high IQ. For me, that's where I miss putting the pieces together. Um, that's why I'm here. I think we all do, Lori. I think we all do. Yeah, and I, and I get it because, you know, sometimes you, you can get to a point and you're just really just overthinking some shit. Yeah. You know? And then the other thing is you get so angry because for me, you know, I had these, these, these crooks pull me over and they didn't jump out and ask for a driver's license, registration, and insurance. They jumped out with a gun pointing yeah. at me and my three-year-old for a fucking seatbelt violation. And then you get mad, and that's what they want because then you can't think correctly. Trezevant versus Tinko. Follow your due process. Do your administrative thing. Become the executor. I'm learning that. I'm doing it all backwards. I'm doing it all backwards completely. And I have them running. But it is so hard, so hard to take emotion out of it. It really is. And Lori, thanks for being a voice of reason, because it, it, if you're caught up in emotion, you're just, you're seeing red and you're looking for the bullseye and you're missing everything else, just like the definition on the screen that you made us look up. You're missing that. You're missing the aspect. Because it's so, the judge is entitled to hold office during good behavior. Let that stick in. Good behavior on whom? That's the question. On them. For the judge or for us? Both. It goes there we both go. Ways. Yeah, we we have to we have to um, be smart, do our due diligence, and we have to take emotion out of it. And it's really, really hard. At least for me, it is. And that's where we need to work with each other and keep us on track, on foundation, and not go so far out because people are working on step one right now and they don't have a good foundation or life experience and, well, and life experience is everything <laughs> agreed 100 percent uh they're working on step one but they're dealing with a problem that requires step six or seven and then that's where they start and that's why our our calls are so uh categorical right. we don't know what to do but you know, if we stay focused and, and thank you so much for joining the call. Um, and G, thank you so much for chiming in and, and, um, Lori, we should connect. You and I should chat privately. Um, I, I really like the way you're thinking and G and because you're from Pennsylvania, I sent you an email. Um, anything else we need to cover because it's 1025. Anybody want to talk about anything, please? Because I want to make sure everybody gets everything out of the call. If there is nothing in the chat or no questions that need to be handled right away, um, if somebody wants to continue this conversation because we've had a great conversation towards the tail end with G Penn and Lori, and Dave O, and we missed Napoleon Dynamite. He started out in the call. Um, we'll either continue this call and pick up the topics, or we're going to call it a night. Everybody okay with that? Sounds good. 
Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Donald, for your input. Don, that was some great information. Thank you. You're welcome, guys. And Blue and Annette and Aja and Chris. Chris, thanks for holding in there. And who else? I, um, oh, we had Rogine. Rogine, are you still on? You don't have to respond, but I think you're still on. I think she's fine. Well, you know, thanks for everyone. I, I went through the list of the 11 respond, uh, recipients on the call. Participants. David, be specific, real quick. What are the questions that you have left that you want to answer? Do you want uh, info on filing IRS forms? I want to go back and recover the IRS forms that I showed earlier. And I'd like to know if I have them all or if I have more that I should fill out to report the court or, or the prosecutor or the judge or anything else um, for claiming my funds that I know they have $20 million of. What more do I need to do in my process? If anybody has info on that, um, you can tag David. Um, you can put the info, you know, you can send him a direct message or put the info in the um, discussion with this um, post about the meeting. Thanks, everybody. I'll go ahead and post uh, as soon as it's ready. Is it my job to end the call? I'll end the call. Okay. I'll stop share. Calls over. Thank you. Thanks, Marie. Thank you. Bye bye. Leave meeting. Oh,